So what's the topic for today? Uh, hello, everybody. This is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this Fellowship Friday for the Church of the Eternally Secure. And uh, some of you probably are uh, new to this program. I want you to know that uh, Fellowship Friday is a unique program uh, on our agenda. We, we have a Sunday program that is our church service. Uh, that's 5 p.m. Eastern time. We have a Wednesday night Bible study, uh, and that begins 9.30 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, and on those programs, uh, I have uh, a, uh, a small group of elders in our church who uh, are the speakers. Uh, but on on the front of the fellowship program, I give everybody an opportunity to join the discussion rather than just watching or commenting in the chat room. Anybody can click on that link and join in the panel discussion. So if you're interested, I'll keep posting the link as the night goes on and reminding everybody. But I do ask you that, uh, that don't join us on the panel unless you've read, understand, and agree with the statement of faith that's published in the description box. See, Friday fellowship is uh, fellowship time. And fellowship cannot take place between uh, um, a believer and a non-believer. Now, I have a lot of friends who are non-believers, and friendship that you can have with anybody. But fellowship can only happen uh, among uh, believers that share this common faith. Uh, so that's enough said for now. Uh, let's first. I already have uh, uh, Caleb and Jason with me. So. Um, Jason, why don't you go first, since you've done this before. Brother Cripps, uh, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. I actually haven't done the fellowship thing uh, on your channel yet, but I have listened to all of them. But you, you of course, mean uh, introduce myself. So I'll just, I'll just keep it short, but I'm glad to be here. I wanted to try it out and actually be involved with one of the programs. So here I am. All right. Thank you, Jesus, for Brother Cripps, as usual. Not only here tonight, but so faithful to, to join us on, on all these programs. Uh, he sure wants to participate and contribute, and I appreciate it. And and we have Caleb here. Caleb, you know, why don't you introduce yourself briefly to, to the viewers? Hey, my name's Caleb. I, I stand on the true gospel alone with grace through faith alone, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. My channel is the same name, and I'm glad to be here. All right. I'm glad you're here, too. And Renee, uh, she's in the chat room. Uh, maybe she'll click on and join us at some point, but she might just keep busy in the chat room tonight. We'll see. But uh, she already asked me a question. Hey, Brother Luke, what, what's the subject for tonight? And Renee, this is Fellowship Friday. The subject is fellowship and praising the Lord. So uh, we'll see where it goes. We can we're, we can talk about anything, but tonight it's not really the time for us to be hashing out all kinds of doctrinal questions. Of course, anything in the Bible we we can talk about, but uh, mainly uh, it's time for us to spend together. I mean, Brother Cripps, uh, I consider you to be a Jesus freak. <laughs> I, I am indeed, and and do you remember? Do you, uh, you probably do, uh, uh, Larry Norman. Uh, no, I don't know that name. I can't recall at least. Oh, cool. Larry Larry Norman was one of the first uh, rock and roll guys. He took uh, music and 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 made Christian rock. He's considered the uh, the grandfather, really, at this point of uh, Christian rock. He uh, worked with Randy Stonehill. And um, he had a song, Jesus Freak. People think it was uh, it was sung by someone else. I'm sure people have heard it, Jesus Freak. But it's from Larry Norman, not from uh, DC Talk, I think maybe was the group that did it uh, more recently. But the song Jesus Freak was by Larry Norman. So a little, little uh, old gospel rock and roll, Christian rock music trivia there for you. Yeah. Okay, well... Um I uh, was just getting got up to look at my bookshelf to find a book that's actually titled Jesus Freaks. Awesome. And but I I don't know I I don't want to take step away too long searching for it. It's up there somewhere. <laughs> uh, but uh, I remember when I uh, first got saved, I didn't know how to identify myself really. Like you know, right now, the the 
the term that I always use, and I'm encouraging other people to embrace this and, and use it, is that I, I refer to myself as a Christian. Uh, mm -hmm. And there's a couple of reasons. Well, one is that uh, when you say Christian, nobody really knows what that means. It means so many things. If you ask 10 people, you'll get 10 different answers probably. What's Christian mean? But um, when you say Christian, um, it's, you're putting all the attention on Christ. And that's the whole point of it. A, a real Christian is, is someone who, uh, it's not about me. It's about Christ. Amen. My, my, my salvation is, does not rely on me uh, being, making myself acceptable to God. My salvation relies upon Jesus Christ and what he's done for me and his promise to me. So I, I like to call myself Christian uh, for that reason, but also because it, it's unusual. And when people hear that, they what do you mean Christ? You mean Christian? And it gives me an opportunity to, to, to define it the way I just did. But uh, I remember when I first uh, uh, believed, and I was, uh, one time I was referring to myself as a born-again Christian. And I was in a church, uh, at that time the first church I joined uh, after getting saved, it was a Nazarene church. And I loved the church and the pastor and the, some of the congregation. But uh, one of the brothers there uh, heard me call myself a born-again Christian. He said, Luke, don't you understand that that's redundant? Because born-again means Christian. Christian means born-again. If you're not born again, you're not a Christian, right? So, so I, I felt always hesitant to use that term. Plus, uh, born again Christian, sometimes the, the world as a whole looks at a born again Christian as, as some kind of a nut, you know? <laughs> so, um, what do you guys say, uh, Caleb? Uh, any, uh, any particular way you refer to yourself uh, in, in your faith? Well, I've I refer to myself as a Christian. It would it would probably take me some time to get used to calling myself a Christian because I've never heard the term like that before. <laughs> so it's something new to me. So, but again, I as long as I trust in the Lord Jesus Christ alone, and don't just give me myself the title because I lived a Christian life or whatever, then yeah. That's all. All right. So uh, I can add a little something to that. So the the sure. term the, the the term Christian used to be w what they called them, and it was mockery. It was like, oh, you're a Christian, and so now they just they 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 change it to make a Christian. And I've been uncomfortable with that for a long time for the very reason, brother Luke, that I've heard you. I, I you know I didn't I didn't make it a a, a point to call myself a Christian. But um, when I heard you talking about it, it made total sense to me because when you say the word Christian, as I've heard you say, it, 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 it's this huge umbrella that people just seem to flock under and you don't really get any meaning from it of what their beliefs are. But if you say Christian and point that out like that, which not many people do, then it, 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 where does it draw the focus? On Christ. <laughs> Christian is 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 played out in different ways, and it dilutes the meaning. I think so. Even though it's hard, Caleb, Christian from now on. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it seems like when you say it, it seems like they're mocking them and calling them that. It's kind of. It sounds like it's similar to how they say when you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ alone. They mock it as easy believism. Oh, that's true. So, so I see the po I see where. Yeah. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm Caleb. I'm, but, I'm used to being mocked uh, to, by uh, unbelievers and even among professing Christians. Uh, yeah. So I'm not going to worry about that. But And also, Caleb, um, I'm not trying to impose this term on you or anybody else. Uh, I'm just saying I, I use it and why I use it. And I encourage every people to embrace it. As a matter of fact, we've got about 30 terms that uh, we're trying to popularize now. These are, we are trying to figure out what to call them, so like wise sayings, uh, uh, not cliches, but um, I came up with the term truisms. Little, little, very short sayings that are expressing a profound truth about our faith. And so far, 
I've asked people to send me, uh, send them in to me, and I have about, I think, 28 of them collected now. Some of them I had to eliminate because they're just too long and cumbersome, but we got quite a good list of these, mm. and the term Christian and Christianity is is, is on the list. Uh, I'm, I'm encouraging people to embrace this, and the more people who embrace it and start using these terms, uh, they'll become popular and uh, it, it, I'll, I'm, I'll give you some examples. Now, we're going to do actually a, a Sunday program. Uh, Matthias thinks we got to do it on a Sunday program, but um, maybe a Friday program is the time to do it. I don't know, but I can give you some examples of some of these truisms, and we can discuss them tonight. Uh, let, but uh, we have uh, Brother Dave in the chat room. Brother Dave. He says he has a question. You interviewed him too, didn't you? How, how did that go? I heard most of it. Oh, it went well. You know, uh, Brother Dave is really easy to uh, work with because he talks a lot, which is good. So <laughs> he's excited. He's excited about the material. Yeah. So it was really easy to manage. I hardly had to say anything. He just let him go and, and he preaches and it was wonderful. He never has a lack for words and he, no. he you're not going to fall asleep in a conversation with him. No, sir. Uh, he has full of passion, enthusiasm. Now, I had a guy tell me many years ago, and he's not even a Christian, but he pointed this out to me. Uh, you know, he, he was a salesman. I worked for the same company with him, and he was talking about being enthusiastic, and he said enthusiasm uh, means uh, it, it's uh, the root word is theos, God. So it's, it's in God, and, and I, don't, I don't really remember exactly how he... But I have to, if we looked that up and looked up the, and the word enthusiasm to see the origin of, maybe someone can do that right now. What is the origin of the word enthusiasm? But I think it's, uh, it's, it's a, has something to do with God. And uh, when we have enthusiasm, it's certainly a, uh, it's a powerful, powerful thing. And I think maybe it is God working in us. But of course, we know the world as a whole does not have God in them. And so their enthusiasm is some coming from some other source. Uh, so Brother Dave says, I have a question, since a preacher, uh, is it true that men who preach will be attacked and sought after by women who are bound by evil spirit, such as Jezebel, or is this all a myth? Well, I can answer that very quickly. Uh, I don't know what it is. I've never heard of it, Brother Dave. Uh, and Brother Cripps? Or Caleb, you, do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Have you heard of that? Well, no, but well, um, well, go ahead. Sorry, uh, nope. what was the clip? So, what was the question again? I'm sorry. Okay, he says, "Is it true that men who preach will be attacked and sought after?" See, I don't understand if they're attacked and sought after. Those are opposing ideas. One is being attacked. It seems to be the odd after opposite sought after maybe they're seeking after you to attack you or i'm getting the impression he means you're being attacked verbally or physically and also sought after or desired i i don't understand brother day you need to clarify this but it says oh, you will be attacked and sought after by women who are bound by evil spirits such as jezebel uh, or, or is this all a myth? Uh, well, I would say that it's a myth if it's anything at all, because I've never heard of it. Usually a myth is something that's a popular idea, but it's not yeah. true. Okay. I did. Yeah, I never never heard of any demoness called Jezebel, so I have no idea. But demonic attack, definitely. Well, it, it is making the rounds. There's a lot of people that are, are claiming that people have a Jezebel spirit, and especially in the Word of Faith movement, there are there are people that call themselves prophetesses and and whatnot, and they use this term all the time. And it just means a, a spirit, and they use the Jezebel from Scripture as a model to describe it, and they say it's a spirit that comes over people rather than it's just that the person is is unsaved and they're acting in a certain way well uh brother dave uh, you know I, it is friday i'm putting the, th the link out publicly for anybody to join any believer so it's there maybe you click on that link brother dave join us and you can clarify what you mean but i think that the um idea of um hey frank um hang on just a second uh the idea of the uh, the jezebel spirit uh 
uh, I would interpret that not as it is a particular spirit like a demon, but it's just an attitude. Uh, yep. you, know, you, have a, you, you have a certain attitude, Jezebel yep. attitude. Do you think that's correct, uh, Cripps? I do indeed. And and I don't, I don't want to switch subjects, but I looked up enthusiasm while while that was going on. And you're yeah. absolutely right. It says religious fervor supposedly resulting directly from divine inspiration, typically involving speaking in tongues and wild, uncoordinated movements of the body. Early 17th century from French and Latin. Uh, enthusiamos in the Greek. Um, enthos, possessed by God, inspired based on theos, which means God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brother Dave, uh, he certainly has enthusiasm, and it's and I, it is inspired by God, I believe. And yeah. I don't, I don't see him demonstrate by speaking in tongues. No. Uh, maybe he does. I don't know. I, we've never talked about that subject. Okay, we got Frank here. Hi, Frank. Welcome. Welcome. Also, welcome everybody. Like you to be in the show. Welcome to the chat room of Sin. Um, hey, Frank. The preacher. I mean, Brother Luke. Glad to see you again and to hear you and to talk with you. And Brother Cripps, uh, the first time that I speak with you also. Yes, yes. I go all the bold voice. That's really uh, awesome. Good to meet it's, you, uh, man. That's yeah, right. So, I'm now, I'm. Uh, appreciating this conversation that we have. Hey, uh, Frank, uh, you, uh, I, I don't know if it's intentional, but your camera is aimed at your ceiling, I believe. Uh, yeah, because I don't want, always like uh, to share. If you want us uh, to see your face, then get that camera focused on you. If you I want like to, the lights, though. There you <laughs> I, I do yeah. like the lights. It's always Christmas here. So, <laughs> I love it. If someone else wants to click the link and join oh, us, don't feel like you have to have your camera on. You can just use the audio if you prefer. Maybe you're in your pajamas or something and you don't want your camera on. I don't, it doesn't matter. That's, that's the but, very reason you just nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Chris Brother Chris has, has never ever shown his face on uh, the video. And he's, he's, oh, he's, yeah, he, he's a very yeah. mysterious person. Show <laughs> your face. <laughs> but I did see the photograph of him once. So it's, yeah. it's not because he's hideous. No. It's because he's actually a beautiful man, oh. very handsome. And yet he uh, he doesn't want to show his face. So it's okay. You, it, it, everybody has the right to participate, however they like, audio or video or just in the chat room. You know what? I promise you this, Brother Luke. When I do finally get a camera, which I just haven't done, get a camera, I will reveal my face on, on one of your, your programs. How about that? I can also okay, show you a crystal, like a crystal like this. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, so I look at, um, my brother Dave is elaborating a little bit more. And he's got this thing going on with Renee in the chat room. Now. So brother Dave wrote, uh, I was getting at this. Uh, uh, you have demonic spirits attack you though through people and you evangelize, etc. Can it be that these demons use these people to try and take you down? Well, um, you know, I keep on referring to these books in my bookshelf. Uh, there's a real good book by um, C.S. Lewis called uh, Screw Tape Letters. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, there, I think there's a lot of validity in his ideas in the book. It's a novel. It's a story about a man who is you know, um, on the path to learn about God and get saved. But um, there's a demon. According to him, every person has a demon assigned to them. And the demon's first job is to prevent you from learning the truth and getting saved. If they fail at that, their demon, their job then is to interfere with you growing and maturing and producing any fruit. So that's the basis of the story. But it's 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 not a textbook. It's in the form of a novel. So it's very interesting. But of course, the Bible says a lot about it too. And yeah, if you want to be a closet Christian and just keep all your your Christianity uh, to yourself and. And uh, it's a private, personal thing. And, well, you have the right to do that. Uh, and you're probably going to be spared a lot of uh, attacks by people and demons. Because why would a demon uh, want bother with you? You're not, you're not doing anything good for the kingdom of God. So he'll just leave you alone. 
uh, it's when people start getting busy working for the Lord that the demons want to get and come against us. So uh, that I do agree with, Brother Dave. Uh, okay, uh, uh, to the uh, the panel here, Caleb, Frank, or Grips, uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I, it wasn't true for me. I can admit that I, I was a closet Christian for some time, not meaning that if someone asked me, I wouldn't tell them, but I wasn't reaching out like I am now. I wasn't doing any broadcasts. I wasn't street witnessing. I wasn't doing any of that. What I would do if I was in a situation, God put someone in, in my path and they asked me or the conversation would, would move around to spiritual things, of course I would tell them. Um, but my story is a long one and it, and it comes from not trusting other believers. And I, I'm not in that place anymore, but I was for a long time. Um, so I very much was a closet Christian. And for me, it was not true that I was not attacked. Um, I was, uh, I, I still was attacked, uh, in, in some ways, even more than I am now. But, um, uh, there are seasons where it seems like there's less attack. I, I'm, I'm attacked all the time in different ways, but it just, it, it's not always, uh, like the, the thing that I focus on. I try in fact, not to focus on my circumstances at all. And I try to uh, have the joy, Brother Luke, that you're talking about, that, that, that you've talked about on many shows that a believer should have. Um, and uh, God has fine-tuned my focus. I focus on Christ rather than my circumstances. So it doesn't lessen the attacks. It just is, is not the main focus. Um, well, I'll tell you, from my experience, um, I got saved in uh, December of 1986. And very shortly after I got saved, uh, my wife started referring to me as a Jesus freak and, and uh, that I was some extreme nut. And uh, it led to us breaking up. I had to move out for a few months and uh, separate for a while. Um, and initially, some friends and, and family didn't react very well to it. But for the most part, I wasn't out there busy. I, I did my own study. I attended church. I was trying to learn, but I wasn't really actively working in, in ministry. But when I retired in, de, in uh, December of 04, uh, so since 04 to now, which is about well, coming on 15 years, um, I had made a deal with the Lord and said, if you bless me financially so that I'm able to quit working for a paycheck, I'll, I can start working for, for the Lord and, and doing ministry work instead. And, and I was blessed and I was able to retire. So for 15 years, I haven't had a job except this, uh, whatever I could do. And I started off by street preaching. Mm -hmm. but what I found out right away, as soon as I started getting busy working for the Lord, that's when the attack came at me. But the, all the years that I was kind of like a little closet Christian where, you know, I, I would talk about it if I had the opportunity, but I, I wasn't busy out there trying to right. promote the gospel in Jesus. So uh, <laughs> they left me alone. But I've been under attacks by the, the demons and I've been under attacks by uh, professing Christians. Isn't that something? Uh, the, the professing Christians part, I mean, just, uh, in particular. Yeah, I never expected it initially, but it uh, turns out the, the biggest enemies uh, that we have yeah. uh, in, this, in the real church, the, the Church of the Eternally Secure, mm -hmm. I mean, this is the name of this congregation, but it's also really defines what the church really is. And all those people who believe that we're eternally secure and we have a guaranteed eternal life because of what Jesus did for us, his promise to us, uh, all the people who have that, uh, we're all in the same church or body of Christ. And uh, some of them, even some of them uh, are intolerant and, and of other they're full of dogmas. This is what I found out. Let me ask, uh, um, Caleb, how many, how long have you been saved now? Well, mm, I've always believed in Jesus, but I haven't heard the, the true gospel, like first Corinthians 15, one through four until I was, I was guided to Renee's channel. I believe huh. so. Another one, Renee, are you listening? <laughs> I tell you, Renee, every day I meet someone that says, uh, thanks to Renee, I understand the gospel, and I'm a believer now. It happens every single day. Uh, yep. so, but, um, yeah. But, uh, 
but in terms of in terms of being saved, mm, I actually don't remember. But I would say, like, I the first time I watched her videos, I think it was either 2020, 2017 or last year. But I would say like either two or three years. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there was a reason I asked you that. I, what was I talking about just before that, Brother Cripps? You can, you can, you can have a good recall. Uh, you were talking about you being in the closet and street uh, preaching and when the attack started to come. That was the main topic before. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I was going to ask uh, how long you've been saved and related to that somehow, but I forgot. So I guess it doesn't matter. But at least we learned a little bit more about uh, Caleb here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just another testimonial for the ministry of Sister Renee Rowland, the untwisted sister. <laughs> yeah, she's not going to take it anymore. Oh, yeah. Also, in terms of demonic attack, I really haven't had that much oppression on me because they know I, even though I really should, but I preach the gospel to everyone. I guess they haven't attacked me like that because I haven't spoken of it like that. Mm -hmm. But when I when I do get the chance to talk about to talk to people about like the real way to be saved and what a Christ Christian really is, I believe that there are some spirits covering people's ears because you know they can't hear me, and they'll say that Christianity is just another simple world religion, which it's totally not true because oh, wow. it focuses all on what Christ has done. So yeah, I would, yeah. uh, that's a very important thing that you really nailed the distinction there, but uh, the religions of the world are all based upon uh, a system of do's and don'ts. And man, it's man's yes. attempt to earn approval or acceptance from God. And then Christianity is, is simply a relationship with God as your Savior, knowing that it is Jesus Christ as your Savior God. And, and re you're relying on Him, what He's done and His promise. So one's personal and relying on a person, like this picture here. Uh, let me see. Uh, um, yeah, this is a perfect picture of it. You know, Jesus wants to pull, up, pull us up to heaven, give us eternal life, and uh, we need Him to do it. We need to realize that it's up to him to do it, and he will do it. He promises he'll do it for anybody who, who will accept him as the Savior. And that just means that uh, uh, we realize we can't do it on our own, and we need him to do it for us. Amen. That's right. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, here I, I see uh, Brother Caleb. You, uh, you have quickly adopted the term. I was going to say that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He said yeah. Christianity right in the sentence before yeah. you start talking, Brother Luke. Yeah. <laughs> also just studying, fantastic. So. Let's see if the next the next one here on my list. I posted the list of these uh, truisms here that we want to promote. I guess we might as well just keep talking about it all the time. I don't need to wait to do a special program on it because we the more we say repeat these things, the sooner everybody will start using these terms. And I think maybe uh, maybe people uh, will recognize the value of these things like the next one on the list i have is the gospel is the gift and the guarantee now um i was i had some real good talks with um, brother leo larson last night you know also uh michael also with mordecai yesterday and i was talking about these things but the um the idea that um, uh, salvation is a gift um, is in the Bible. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So um, the, the term gift and, and um, uh, is in the Bible relating to our salvation. Uh, also in um, Ephesians 2, 8, 9, it says, for by grace are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God. And by the way, people argue about what is the gift in that uh, verse, what, what is the gift? And uh, Calvinists will say the gift is the faith. Uh, and, uh, but the, the truth is um, 
the the gift is the salvation because the, the subject, subject yeah. the subject of it all is um, um, for by grace are you saved is talking about getting saved yeah. and so we know that grace is a gift we know that salvation is a gift these terms these set statements are actually clearly stated in the bible the yeah. bible says there's five gifts that we get and when we're a believer the the gift of grace the gift of righteousness, the gift of salvation, the gift of eternal life, and the, the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. So these things are all gifted to us uh, at the moment we believe. Uh, so this, I'm trying to promote the term free gift theology instead of free grace theology. Now, have you guys heard about the the, 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 the grace community or the yeah. or the, the free grace community, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, do you realize that the term free grace is not in the Bible? Now you might think, oh, Larry, Luke, you're heretic. Don't say this such a thing. I'm not saying the concept of free grace is not in the Bible. It is. I would grace. never say that to you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> grace, <laughs> grace, the, grace is free, and it's in the Bible. It says that, that, that we the grace is free, freely given to us. But uh, the term, the two words, free and grace, are not united together anywhere in the Bible. Right. At least mm. in the KJV, I, I, you know, if you do a, a word search like that, you won't find that. Uh, but the concept is valid. But what we do find in the Bible is free gift. And so uh, uh, I'm trying to promote the idea. Let's start referring to it rather than the grace community. I'm not going to make much progress on that, I think, because uh, the grace community and the term, the grace community, the free grace community of believers is been really popularized. And I'm happy that we have a grace community. But um, uh, if you ask someone, uh, what's, a, what's free grace? Unless they understand this theology, they, they, what do you mean free grace? I don't know what free grace is. And if you say, well, what's free gift? Everybody's going to be able to define you what a free gift is, right? Mm -hmm. So free grace is not really as descriptive to the world as free gift. So if we say that we are, our theology is free gift theology, then it tells something. Uh, it makes it a profound point that this salvation is a free gift. Uh, now, when was the first time this term free gift was used, since it's not actually in the Bible? Uh, the earliest I ever saw it recorded is in the Warrant of Faith, the sermon by C.H. Uh, Spurgeon. We did a Bible study on that a few months ago on the Wednesday Night Bible Study. Uh, in that sermon, he used the term free grace. Maybe Spurgeon is the one that originated and popularized the term free grace. Um, so let me, get, I want to go on and on. What's your reaction to that? I, the idea I'm saying is let's start talking about our, our theology as free gift theology and that the free, the free gift um, believers uh, rather than free grace. <laughs> I don't think that's going to go over very well, but yeah, I think you understand my point. Yeah, the, I, I would just like to add that the, the word free and grace uh, isn't necessarily redundant. I think there is a use for it because all gifts are not free. All gifts are not free. In fact, um, a timeshare, uh, oftentimes they'll, they'll reel people in by some kind of gift, but the gift has strings. In order to get the gift, you have to come sit in these seminars to me, that's not a free gift. If I've got to do something for the gift, then even though I'm not paying monetarily for the gift, it's not a free gift. So there are several instances. Banks do it. They, they give you uh, a quote unquote free gift, but you have to open an account. In other words, there are things that you have to do for a lot of quote unquote gifts out there. So the term gift is not necessarily free. Well, I, I, your point is valid, but wrong, I think. <laughs> it, it, it happens. People do say, Here, here's a free gift for you, and then there are strings attached, and that nullifies it. It no longer becomes a free gift, is it? Yeah. It's not really a free gift. So they are calling it a free gift, but it's not a free gift. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. 
so I, I think the, the idea of free gift is, is, is valid, even though there are people who are misusing the, the term. It's, because as Paul says, it's either a gift or it's, uh, what do you call it, wages? Yeah. I, I, need, I need to clarify, though, if you're thinking that I'm saying that it's not valid, because that's not my point at all. I'm saying it is valid because the world uses it in a different way, and there's always something attached. Where with salvation, we don't do anything. It is a real, true, and honest, authentic, free gift. Does that make more sense? Yeah. Sorry, I, I was muted. Yeah. I was talking while I was muted. Um, okay. The so the the point I'm making is that uh, free grace. Uh, when we use that term to the world as a whole, they won't. Uh, it's not as obvious. Right. When we say free gift. It, it should be more obvious what we're talking about. And Paul goes into great detail to clarify the difference between a gift and wages, uh, and. Uh, and also, uh, but this point here I'm trying to promote is, is the gospel, the good news, is about the gift and the guarantee. Now, if you have a gift, but that doesn't come with a guarantee, uh, then uh, it, 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 it can be nullified again if it's taken back or if you have to do something. I have a video titled uh, Free Gift, uh, or uh, some, I forgot, but the, the term is, Salvation uh, is, is is free, no strings attached. That the term no strings are attached. Right. No ifs, ands, or buts. No strings are attached. Is the point I'm trying to make in it. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, but it has to have the guarantee. Otherwise, it's not truly a, a gift. Uh, if I could say, I'll give this to you, but I will take it back if you fail in in, in a certain way. If you fail me in a certain way, I will take it back. Then it, it really is not a gift. There are strings attached, and it's not guaranteed that it's yours. Yeah. It's not guaranteed. So uh, yeah. I, to Caleb, you said that you you understood the gospel more recently when you uh, learned as you learned from Renee, but you thought that you were a believer uh, saved much earlier. Uh, I don't know. I can't judge when someone actually got saved. But I believe until a person understands this gift and guarantee, then they uh, they can't be saved. They have to understand that, look, it's a gift. I, it's, I'm not contributing to it. I'm not buying it. I'm not earning it. It's totally free from Jesus, giving it to me, and it's guaranteed. And I've got it, and I can never lose it for any reason. If they don't understand that, then they don't understand what the gospel is. Um, and uh, some people understand that, but they don't believe it. So... Uh, 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 that's why when I say the gospel is the gift and the guarantee. Um, all right, give me your, your, your thoughts on, on all that. Uh, but I, I'm trying to get everybody to start using the term, the gospel is the gift and the guarantee. And of course, every time one of these terms, it should open up a conversation. Like Brother Leo and I were talking last night. I said, I remember when I first got saved, I wanted to start sharing my faith, but I didn't really uh, know how to get a conversation started. And I used to have this inner struggle going on all the time. I want to, gosh, I'm talking to a friend or someone in my family. I want to talk about Jesus and my faith. And I'm trying to figure out some, wait for the perfect opportunity for bring it up in the conversation. And uh, hoping that it somehow it'll, uh, It'll just naturally be able to happen, or uh, recognize the opportunity, and or create the opportunity somehow. But I was telling Leo, I said, Leo, you're so busy uh, studying the Bible now that you can legitimately say to someone who asks you, and what's the most common question you get from from uh, someone if you haven't seen him for a little while? They say, Hey, Caleb, hi, what have you been up to? Yeah. <laughs> See, Brother Leo could say. I, I've I've been up to the Lord's work. I've been I've been studying the Bible and teaching the Bible and making music about Jesus and the Bible. See, he can honestly say that. So the opportunity is there naturally. If we're busy working for the Lord, then we can naturally and honestly always talk about Him because people are going to always say, "Hey, what have you been doing? What have you been up to?" Or they can say, "Hey, how are you doing?" Oh, well, a lot of people say, "Well, I'm above ground." <laughs> uh, I said, well, 
you're you're happy about being above ground. I I'd rather be dead. What? Yeah, because <laughs> the Bible says, absent from the body, I'm present with the Lord. Yeah, and paradise is yeah, much yeah, better than says, you know, so. to live with Christ, but to die is gain. So uh, as happy as I am yep. it, with my blessed life, uh, it can't compare to the joy of eternal life and, and uh, the new heavens and the new earth and being with the Lord. So what I'm trying to make is that when we're busy focused on Jesus, studying about Jesus, talking about Jesus, serving Jesus and the church and the, and humanity, then it, 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 we don't have to struggle trying to create some uh, artificial opportunity to talk mm -hmm. about Jesus. It'll just naturally be part of our conversation. I can actually, I can actually speak from experience at work. That yesterday, uh, I was speaking to an Israelite woman, and we actually actually had agreements. She knew that the law was to only stop our mouths and make us guilty before God, and she knew that we are not under no longer under the old covenant, but we're under the new. And we had other conversations about biblical stuff after that, but. Yeah, we came to the same terms that you're only saved by grace through faith alone in Christ alone. Amen. She she says that she doesn't call herself a Christian, but that's what a that's what a Christian is. Someone who trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ alone with no works yeah. added. So, yeah. That was awesome. amazing. To the uh, to the really? viewers and the chat room, uh, another reminder: I just posted the link again. If you want to come, either on camera or just the audio, if you want to join this group discussion we're having here, feel free to click on that link. Provided, provided that you are a believer, uh, and the way I will test that is read the statement of faith that I have in the description box of all my videos, including this one. And uh, if you're in agreement with the statement of faith, which is the, the doctrines of Christianity, then uh, uh, we'd love to have you. We can call you brother or sister and, and have fellowship with you. You're welcome to join. If you're not a believer, though, uh, you're welcome to be in the chat room and dialogue and ask questions. Uh, we don't want any people arguing against the core doctrines of Christianity in the fit chat room, though. It's not, it's not a place to carry on some kind of like argument. If you want to try to prove us wrong, uh, that's not the place for it. Uh, Frank, you've been a good listener. Yeah, I was quiet for a while. You said that there weren't strings attached to that gift, right? Yes. There, so there, are, there actually are strings attached to that gift. Oh, well, when you only wrap it up with a bow, you mean? Yeah, you need to unravel that gift. <laughs> uh, yeah, but not all gifts are coming in a package. And I, can hand you, I can hand you a book. To a gift, secure. And Sorry. It up for you, but I see your point. <laughs> it's, it's funny. Look who's here now looking for, who is this? Hi. Who is Hi. that? I don't recognize the name. Looking for it is only part of it showing up. I see your picture. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Natalie. Oh, Natalie? Natalie. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome, Natalie. Welcome. Sorry, I'm not very glamorous. Hey, hey Natalie, let me ask, can I ask you a question. How, how blessed are you today? Sorry, I'm not very glamorous. Hey, Natalie. You yeah. want you want to turn your sound off on the on the uh, whatever you're watching the show so they can get feedback. Hello. Uh, yeah. No. Okay, Natalie, we can hear you, uh, and there's no feedback now, so that's good. Uh, to everybody on the panel right now, uh, just a reminder: if you're not taking a turn actually speaking, we should have our microphones muted. Uh, uh, when you want to talk, that's when you unmute your microphone. But Natalie, uh, welcome. And I, my question to you is, tell me how blessed you are today. Um, I feel very blessed. <laughs> um, Jesus is a good man. And it's, 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 it's so much better to have than any other religion. So Jesus keeps you safe. 
So, yes. <laughs> so I'm not very good at talking now. He keeps you safe and secure because he's guaranteed you eternal life. That's what we're trying to point out here. So the point I made was, okay, let's use the term Christian and Christianity. Let's use the term the gospel is the gift and the guarantee. And now here's one. Salvation is not a sin issue. It is a son issue, S-O-N. Okay? Anybody want to talk about that? Salvation is not a sin issue. It is a son issue. The son of God is what we're talking about. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Is the question. I struggle stopping smoking. I haven't stopped smoking yet, so I don't know. I still what, smoke. What, what does that have to do with what I'm asking you? Sorry, I've got asperges. Uh, I I said the, the, the term... Listen to the term I'm going to say here. I want you to give, give me your thoughts on this. Salvation is not a sin issue. No. Nope. It is a son issue. The issue regarding salvation is not the sin in our life or the cleanliness in, of our life. No. It, the salvation is, the issue is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. What will you do with Jesus Christ? Will you believe in him and receive this gift Rely on yeah. him completely, or are you going to be thinking that it, it all depends on the sin in your life and getting that out of your life? So the saying is, the sal salvation is not a sin issue; it is a son issue. Anybody who wants to comment on that, go ahead. Yeah, I want to call this no more lordship, a lordship salvation, but sonship salvation for this channel, like a better word. Because we are sons hey guys. purchased by its blood. Oh, hey, Renee. Hey. <laughs> I'm just on audio because it's hot and dark. So. Oh, okay. Okay. We don't have to. I told another verse of God that we are eternally secure. And the gifts of God are without repentance. I'm going to my battery's yeah. dead, Jim. What's the, what's my the battery's verse? dead. I can't be outside. Oh, what's the verse? Oh. Frank, did you say you have a, another eternally secure verse for us? Where's my, where's my charger? Yes. The gifts of God are without repentance. The, the gifts and calling of God were, are without repentance. Or another, yep. another translation would say the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. Irrevocable. Yep. Yeah. But the thing about that verse that I like is that we could take that word repentance and prove two points at the same time. In other words, the gift of eternal life, the calling of God to you to, to receive this gift uh, is without repentance. That means you don't have to repent of your sins. If a person wants to say, you got to repent of your sins. Metanoia. Yeah, this verse says, hey, hey, it's without repentance. So, had to you. If, 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 had repentance, if repentance of sin was required, why does the Gospel of John say it was written to teach us how to get salvation? And the word repent appears zero times in that book. Zero. Zero. Yeah. Yes. So, <laughs> the verse, the, the, um, the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Could you could say, and I don't think this is the correct usage for it, but you could say that uh, see, repentance is not part of salvation, it's without repentance. But what it's really telling us, if we want to be honest about it, I think, is that uh, without repentance, that means that uh, with God will not change his mind and uh, take it, take back the gift, irrevocable, irrevocable. No. Irrevocable. It wasn't irrevocable. If it does didn't was irrevocable. That's you because would. you can't lose it right there. No, because God is not a thief, okay? Satan is the thief. Who he called, he justified, whom he justified, he glorified. He's not gonna justify yes. him, but he doesn't glorify. Yeah, okay. I have a I have to ask Renee a question though, because uh you were in the chat room, Renee. I don't know if you were listening at the time, but Caleb here has uh, cited Rene Rowland as the person who taught him about the gospel. Oh, yeah. 
That, that's fantastic. But I wanted to say a lot of people, they're saved when they come to my channel and the Holy Spirit is just bearing witness to what they already knew. That's why it rings true to them. And then that's why you'll have others that reject it or hate it because they're not. They don't have the Holy Spirit bearing witness to the truth. You well, know? I have I have no doubt that many people, when they meet you or come into this uh, community, that they come in here as a saved a saint and, and uh but i don't know i don't know when someone got saved i don't know if they were saved a year ago or 20 years ago i don't know all i know is can a person tell me now i have the gift of eternal life it's that's very great made by jesus christ that's great to hear that's one of the goals of my channel is to get saved people secure and clear so they can get others saved yes that, that makes me feel very good. It makes it all worth it. I'm sure of my salvation too. That's I'm not going to let depend on my emotions anymore. That's right. Because feelings are not truth. Feelings are a response to whatever we're thinking. We got to think differently. We got to yeah. against me, attacks me. He tells me even that God is a liar. And right. I'm just thinking all the night in the name of Jesus. And all year. <laughs> it's a doctrine of devils to believe the trust that God won't let you be lost. I mean, that's crazy. The Bible says it's an evil heart of unbelief when we doubt that he saved us. So it's crazy. There's such a huge campaign against once saved, always saved, because what they're doing is they're telling you not to trust God's promises. And not only that, but that it's evil to trust God's promises. Oh, and for, and for that reason, they go Jezebel. Yeah, that's horrible, isn't it? That they oh. actually say it's a doctrine of devils to take God at His word, to hmm. trust oh. only in Jesus. When, they, when I was a, when I believed the you, reason they they think it's arrogant to say you know you're saved is because they think salvation's based on something you're doing and how you're living. So they think if you say, I know I'm saved, that you think you're so great. And that's why Catholics call it the sin of presumption, because they don't understand that God counts our faith as righteousness and that it's not humble. It's not humble to say, I'm not sure I'm saved, because our faith is not in ourselves, but in God. Okay. Oh, indeed. I recognize the devil uh, is uh, going to gossip and uh, slanderously reporting in an unbeliever's ear that you would be Isabel. Right. Yeah. And that's that's the spiritual attack. I know much about the spiritual world, although not all. But I know when a false voice speaks to me, it's indeed in the devil. Negativity, uh, hey. uh, false gospel messages, uh, feelings okay. that I'm I not right. Brother, uh, when you have this many people on the panel, it's very important to mute your microphone if you're not talking. Otherwise, you get all kinds of audio difficulties. So if you're not, you mute your microphone. Okay? I wanted to ask you, yeah, Lily Girl, uh, Sister Flora, welcome. Uh, I wanted to ask Renee, you're talking about, you think it has something to do with uh, getting sin out of your life. That's, that's a completely related to this point I was asking people to respond to. The saying is, and I first heard this from uh, Lisa, Sister Lisa, uh, for the most high Jesus. Uh, salvation is not a sin issue. It is a son issue. That's right. You either have the son, you're covered by the blood and you're saved or you've rejected it. That's it. There's only, that's it. Cause they says that the Holy spirit will come and convict the world of sin because they do not believe on me. That's right. That's fantastic. And I, I told you what the other guy said, Luke. That it's not about the plan of salvation. It's the man of salvation. Uh-oh, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. I said i got to add that to the list here. It's not about the plan of salvation. I'm going to write that down. Uh, Lily girl. I got you in the back. Turn that microphone off. And, uh, I couldn't do it. It was Lily. Really? Don't worry. I'm right here. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hey, sis. Yeah, we hear you. Yep. Oh, hi, everyone. How are you doing? Well, are you really want me to answer that? If I answer, <laughs> if I answer that, you know, you know where I'm going to go with it. 
<laughs> yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm uh, on a scale of one to ten. I'm a nine point seven five. The only Praise way God. the only way it would be better is if I was dead. <laughs> Yes, because you get to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, Flora, you're, uh, have you been listening to much? You know what we're talking about? Do you want to respond to this? Uh, I, just show, I just showed up. I just realized um, it was going on. So, um, okay, well, no, I don't know what you're going on. I'm, I'm going over some of these uh, terms that I want people to start repeating and popularize. And we, we talked about referring to ourselves as a Christian instead of a Christian. Uh, and uh, the, the gospel is the gift and the guarantee. And now the last one we have brought up was salvation is not a sin issue. It is a son issue. But that's S-O-N, of course, not S-U-N. So I'll give you a chance to respond to any of that if you like now. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree, definitely. Uh, salvation is all about what Jesus Christ did. Um, yeah, we, you know, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and that's why we need a Savior. And now that Jesus Christ came into the world to die for our sins, we just need to believe on Him, what He did, and know that it is sufficient to save us. And everybody else that speaks against that, um, I don't know what to say. Either they are not saved because they have not believed, or they're just deceived. So that's what I have to say about that. Laura? Uh, another thing Brother Dave brought up in the chat room is they like to say only our past sins. When Hebrews says oh, that Christ died Oh my once gosh, I know. He died once for Listen, all. listen, these people can't read English. They don't so understand. Why, <laughs> why, well, I guess we should just wait to believe so all our sins are paid for then. And plus, you we should just wait, wait till you're dead. about to die yeah. and then hope you that you don't dead. sin in the last five seconds. Of All your our sins are future because we didn't That'd exist when he died. So if you, they're talking about only the past from since the time you believe, then what blood cut, what, since he died once for all, there is no more blood to apply to the ones in the future now. Because they used to have animal sacrifices every year to cover the past sins for the next year, right? Yeah. Well, if you died once and exactly. it only covers the past sins, then we're all lost. I mean, well, that's the thing. Um, that's That should show you exactly right there that they think they're keeping it. It's yeah, the exactly. saddest thing I've ever, ever, ever heard. And it's it's such a, it's a rave right now. It's, a, it's rampant. It's everywhere you turn. People come up because they want to make an excuse. Oh, yeah, well, no, he died for a past sins. Just a past sins. Well, if he, if he only died for a past sins, then you're saying his blood is not enough to wash away all his sins. Well, no, he died for all of our sins 2,000 years ago. You weren't even born your parents don't even think of you yet like ugh. that guy tried to explain it like this it's just catholicism because he said oh you believe and then all your past sins and then as you sin you've got to confess it and repent it and then the blood's applied okay well what about the ones you don't commit and what about the ones you don't know you committed and so now you're in the bondage of constant sin fixation where you're looking at yourself all it's just catholicism that's all Might as well is. go and buy a rosary and join the Catholics. That's right. That's right. Just imagine what it will be on Judgment Day if it was like if that was the case. Hey, let's, uh, let's, uh, Anything uh, to minimize his blood. Anything. Can we? Can we, we got a, a point here in the chat room from Sabrina. Please, not in bondage. Can I, can I? Can we take a minute to respond to this? Sabrina uh, is asking something I think is very interesting. Yeah. Uh, gosh, where is it? Uh, she says. It's jumping all over the place. Uh, let's see. I can read it if you want. Okay. I'm going to get to the ch chat uh, room as well. Okay. Go, ahead, go ahead and re read it, uh, Caleb. It says, Where is uh, it? It said, she said, a man came on my channel and said, to, and said that to me, past sins only. He said, if God forgives your sins and remembers them no more, then how does he chastise? Remembering our sins doesn't mean like he doesn't have a memory. It means he's not going to hold them against us for eternity. 
Yeah, yeah, they yeah. Are remembered on our account. It doesn't mean that they don't have consequences. Here. Yeah, it, it just means that our sins are not imputed unto That's us right. anymore. Yeah. They're not counted toward us. It doesn't Thank mean you. that God doesn't know that we sin. Thank of course, He you. knows that we sin, but we're His children. Now we're His children. He chastised those He loves. Yeah, it's not like mm -hmm. Wait a second. Don't, don't, you, don't you guys think that because God is really, really old that He's gotten senile and He can't remember things? Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> when, it, when it says our sins, He'll remember no more. Obviously, at the judgment, he's not going to impute them like Flora said. He's not going to put them on our account. They were put on Jesus's account. Yeah, they yeah. were. They were on him. They. It drives me crazy when people use yeah. stupid. That would, that, would that would be double jeopardy. That would be double jeopardy. That would be saying that God is not righteous, right? Yes. Because exactly. he is righteous. He already yeah, right. put it on right. someone else, which is his right. son. Right. He's the only one who is able to pay for it. Listen, yes. anybody right. out there that is delusional enough to think that they can cover the rest of the sins that's going to happen the rest of their life, I feel sorry for you on Judgment Day. That's all I have to say. Yep. It's going to be. You can't pay. You can't. A crime cannot be paid for twice. Yep. That's not even in our fallen justice system. We know that is double jeopardy. Like you said, I can't pay for the same sin Christ already paid for. And okay. that's what people can't get. I guess okay, unbelievers I'll, forget I'll that we're human. I want to ask everybody to focus on the last part of her uh, question. And that is the idea of chastisement. Uh, what do you think this concept that we find in Hebrew chastisement really means? Sin comes with consequence naturally. It's not even God doing it to us half the time. But I think that means that he is uh, molding us as gold tried by fire so that we can grow and be a vessel of honor meet for the master's use. Not Amen. to beat us up. Well, Amen. Many, Amen. Many, yeah. many people, Amen. many people uh, teach chastisement as uh, like a parent giving their child a little spanking. It so says, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thy yeah. rod and thy staff, they comfort me. With gentle correction, he moves us where we're supposed to go. Yeah. You mean he doesn't break our legs, Renee? Oh, no. He doesn't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't have to break your legs. He's using the staff to steer us in the right direction. Yeah. Yes. He's not going to beat his children into submission. It's just the, the consequences of choices in our lives. God's not mocked. You reap what you sow. You know? Yeah. We're not going to put a world in the end that doesn't believe. So they no. might seem to get away with it, but they won't. You didn't know, I believe in the Bible, the term reaping and sowing appears uh, once by Paul and once by Jesus. And uh, I always taught that reaping and sowing was a law. I referred to it as the law of reaping and sowing. Um, but after doing my study on Job, um, I concluded that reaping and sowing is not a law, meaning that it's not an absolute. In other words, you sometimes have good people in terms of relative, relatively good. They're not doing all wrong things. And, but they're getting uh, some bad consequences, but it's not not because of reaping and sowing. It's just they're at the wrong place at the wrong time. God is not controlling every movement of every molecule and everything that we do. So we are subject to uh, someone murdering us or hitting us in a T-boning us in a car. And sometimes it happens, and we didn't, we didn't earn it or deserve it. So right. it's not a law to reap and sow. It's a principle. And we the, also principle know generally, the principle says generally this is true. If you start doing good things, you're going to get res good results in your life. If you're doing the wrong things, you're going to get bad results in your life. And Brother Luke, we also see that when when a saved person does something like really wicked, it opens the door and it's not God doing it to us. It's an open door for the enemy, for Satan to destroy us. Remember when he said, turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh? So it's not God doing it. It's an open door that we have left open. And that guy was having an affair with his father's wife. And so Paul said, turn such a one over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh. So that God may save his spirit on the day of the Lord. So it's not God doing it to him. 
it's the sin and the consequence. It leaves an open door, and we know Satan's ready to pounce to destroy any of God's people. Okay, uh, let me talk about Satan for a second here. Uh, the uh, uh, God is omnipresent. Satan is not omnipresent. He's not everywhere. He is limited to time and space. He can only be with one person, uh, dealing with one person, not all of humanity. So a lot of times we tend to think and that Satan himself is coming against us, but you're one of 700 billion, I mean, 7 billion people. And why do we think that Satan has selected me personally to torment out of 7 billion people? I would say that this principalities uh, is at work, but not Satan personally. Yet the, his principalities at hand doing most of the work i thought i heard leo too i wanted to tell everybody what you said luke that he had some beautiful music oh, leo there. Hi, is, is, hi looking for is, is crosstown is that leo crosstown i is thought that... i heard leo's voice earlier but it made me reminded of his music so i was just going to hey, uh, uh cross crosstown uh welcome uh say hi if you if you can, you need to unmute. I think uh, looking for her wanted to talk too, and I can't hear her. Uh, okay. uh, I turned I turned hers off actually because uh, uh, she didn't do it. I had to turn everybody's mic off if they're not oh. uh, talking. But I it's okay. Uh, so let me see. For. I know who he is. <laughs> Let me see if I can get it back on here. I don't know if I can turn it back on now. Okay. Uh, yeah, everybody, if you're, if you're not talking, turn your mic off because we're going to get into uh, audio feedback. Uh, but uh, Crosstown, I think that is Leo. Uh, I recognize the term, the name Crosstown, but I'm not really sure. So, okay, if you get uh, everything working and you want to say something, speak up, Crosstown. Otherwise, uh, okay, uh, looking for uh, – uh, uh, can you can you speak? Can you turn your microphone on, or did I, did I disable it? Try to turn your microphone on. Hello. Uh, you know – do women have to have the head covered when they pray? It says in the Bible. I think I think it said that. I can't really remember. I, I didn't hear that. Would you repeat it? Are women supposed to have their heads covered when they pray? Oh, Renee? <laughs> you want to answer that? Renee? No, when they pray, are women supposed to have head covered? Yes, I'm going to ask Renee to answer that. Or... Uh, Lily girl, you want to, Lily girl, you want to answer that? Do you have to cover your head when you pray? Cover your head, um, Lily girl. Um, you're supposed to. I think it's in uh, First Corinthians somewhere. Um, not sure right now. Um, but it says that you're supposed to cover your hair when you're praying or when you're prophesying. But that is usually in like a church. Um, kind of like a public place and back in that time so again head covering is a choice um, when you read that whole scripture in context um, because Paul says that um, you can choose to you, basically you have the right to choose whether you want to or whether you don't want to so I personally have a personal conviction to cover my hair when I'm praying and I'm just at home right but if I can't find a scarf or anything to cover my hair, I'm going to pray without it. Because what's more important, my communion with God or me putting a scarf on? So <laughs> it's all about what's most important here. Well, you know, we're, we're doing our um, working our way through the Pauline epistles. And I'm, we'll get to that point at some point. Uh, and I'll be interested to uh, see how we figure that out. But we do know that this this um, grace, this liberty that we're we are given, uh, trumps all any other ordinances. Um, 
as Lily Girl said, Bible tells us that uh, we have um, liberty. Everything is lawful. Not everything is beneficial for us or expedient. Uh, so you can choose to do something. Uh, you're free to do it. You're not going to go to hell over it. But it doesn't mean that uh, it, it's a beneficial thing. It, it might come with some consequences. It might. Uh, it, it might not. But uh, you're you're free, so you don't have to feel. We don't. We don't want to go back under the law or some kind of a liberty. So uh, that's that thing. Renee, what are your thoughts on that? I don't know what's wrong with Renee's mic, but I just wanted I stepped, to say I that. Away for a second. Go ahead. Repeat that. I was okay. listening to her talk about her hair. Yeah, I just wanted to say there is no condemnation in Christ. Um, so don't if don't let anyone condemn you over not wearing a scarf or wearing a scarf. I mean, it's just ridiculous. If you want to wear a scarf, wear a scarf. If you don't want to wear, wear a scarf, don't wear a scarf. But don't let anyone condemn you because honestly, Christ is not condemning you. Yeah. Nope. I don't so. feel any condemnation. I wear things that are modest. I, you know, you don't want your chest hanging all out and your legs all the way exposed. I do my best to not draw any of that kind of attention to myself but that's for my own thing you know i don't understand women that get offended when they're wearing they're half naked grinding on some guy in a club and then get mad they got the wrong you know th <laughs> wrong idea i'm like you know don't don't put up free chicken <laughs> you know if somebody comes up drooling going i want some chicken give me the chicken <laughs> well you have to sign out and blinking lights and said free chicken <laughs> Well, uh, I don't remember off the top of my head uh, exactly the address of the verse that talks about covering your head when you're praying. I, I believe it's in the Pauline epistles, and we'll get to that eventually, Renee. But if you're familiar with it, do you have an answer? Specifically yeah, that was a uh, that was a thing. That was also a um, a uh, uh, a tribal acceptable thing of modesty during that time period. I mean, the laws for modesty uh, change in different uh, generations and different times. Uh, but I mean, if a person feels compelled to cover their head, then fine. I mean, I used to get under a tallit, which are, are, are for men only in the Old Testament. But I would do that as my own little prayer closet. So, I, I mean, it's all it's all a matter of, of what um, of a person feels convicted to do it is their own choice and like flora said i wouldn't judge somebody else like it's if a person decides they they're uh, they like wine they drink red wine with their dinner and they have two glasses of wine at dinner i would certainly not condemn someone if they, the the thing is in the bible something that is not sin becomes sin when you do it against your own conscience that's why Paul talks about those weak in the faith, like certain eating certain meats and stuff like that. If somebody chose to do it or like, who was that, uh, Brother Luke? Was it Timothy or Titus that did not get circumcised when they compelled him to and said you had to to get saved? But later he did get circumcised, but he knew it wasn't for salvation. He just did it because he wanted to as a symbol to mm -hmm. God. But I think I would, I would never want to do that myself. Yeah, no, no way. <laughs> uh, now, uh, cross Lord, now, now I know who Crosstown is. It's not Brother Leo. It's Brother Dave. So Cro Brother Dave. Uh, oh, Brother Dave. I love him. Hey, what's Church going on, Brother Luke? Uh, I'm glad you could join us, Brother. If you've been listening, give us any thoughts on anything you want. Brother I just Dave. Got to I just joined in and uh, I don't know what was going on, but the, the screen wouldn't pop up to where I can see you guys. So I was like hearing it in the background of my phone, but I couldn't see anybody. So I was like trying to figure out how to disconnect myself so I can rejoin. A woman wearing her hair down back in those days was the symbol of a loose woman. So, I mean, it meant something quite different than it does today. Well, it, did somebody did somebody ask about a hair covering when they yeah. pray? Yeah. All right. The, the way I understand it, I mean, if, if you want to, if you're a woman and you want to cover your head, do so. But I understand that verse to mean that basically Paul was saying that men shouldn't really have long hair and women shouldn't have short hair. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Well, look, I have long hair. It's pretty much about what's acceptable 
and and how we should project ourselves to the world. It's more about what we're doing, uh, for how we're looking to other believers and even the world that doesn't believe. We don't want to have any hint of indiscretion or sin or unkindness. It's, um, That's the whole point. It's also, I just want to say, that it is also about what the time was. I think sometimes people forget. But back then, men used to wear things that looked like dresses. Okay? Yep. 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 And now, if when, if when men wear dresses, we know what that is. Okay? Right. So, you know... <laughs> we, <laughs> there were things that we just have to be very down. careful. Right. Like, so if you're a woman now... Basically, yep. this is what I try to do, right? I try to be modest, okay? I like wearing jeans, okay? But I'm not, if I wear jeans, I'm gonna wear, like, because I've got a butt, okay? All right, I've got a nice bum. So I cover it with a big shirt, okay? Because I'm trying to not have everybody pay attention to me down there, right. okay? So it's about modesty and thinking you are a representation of the body of Christ. That's okay? right. So right. everything you're doing, you have to do that with, okay, I, this is the mind of Christ, okay? What do I look like? That It's not some weird condemnation thing where you're like, oh my gosh, well, I better be careful. Oh, well, go, go ahead and be a Muslim, okay? If, right. if you're going to be... <laughs> Condemn yourself. We go ahead and be a Jehovah's Witness. We do. You might as well only uh, play the trumpets like one of these. We we do these things, and it says for the unbelievers and the 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 believers as well. But so yeah. the world sees it, and God's name is not blasphemed. That's why it says, "Let everyone that names the name of Christ." depart from iniquity and he gives us these standards of how to treat people and how to present ourselves to others and then james uh reminds us not to uh, be a respecter of persons don't treat the rich greater than the poor we're supposed to be a light to the world and it's all so that we don't cause any harm or evil to be spoken of the church and and to be spoken of about god and so that should be our motive all the time is God, is, is this going to actually hurt? How many times have you heard people say that they ran away from God because of something, somebody that claimed to be Christian dead to them because of hypocrisy yep. and something evil done when they were a professor of Christ and now it has harmed someone. That's why I think it's so awful when those children were molested in the Catholic Church because not that going away from the Catholic Church is bad. They need to leave that. But now they're afraid to come to God because they think that it's all, it's false. They've got a bad taste in their mouth about Jesus. And that is wicked. And those people are going to pay for it because it's far worse than just harming the child. It's harming no. faith. It's harming, you know, uh, Jesus even said, if anyone offends one of these little ones, it's better to have a millstone tied about their neck. Correct. You know, it's about Correct. how others perceive us as well and i think it, it's also a heart for god if you feel you want to be respectful to god and you think it's disrespectful to show your head to him that's fine but i've never been under that feeling i've never felt that way uh but if a person does then they should absolutely follow their conscience yeah i, I think we've had a lot of a very interesting uh thoughts on the question uh I think that uh, Brother Dave, I've, uh, I've also heard it uh, interpreted the way you, you explained it. Uh, but the, the, to me, the, uh, the operating principle Paul gave us is this freedom in that uh, everything is lawful. In other words, we have liberty, but not everything is beneficial. So even though you can do something and, and you're not going to lose your salvation over it, it doesn't mean that it's the healthy thing for you to do it certain way so you have to be thoughtful and um I, but i do think we need to apply the rule of course uh the contact and we're not gonna do it right now but we'd have to read that that whole chapter and, and find out uh, what the whole subject's being discussed we're gonna get that we're working our way through the pauline epistle so i i, I don't even know what book it's in is it in colossians or uh ephesians or something i can't remember but we'll, we'll get to that we're on um uh, right now, we're in the uh, first Corinthians. And Flora made a good point, Brother Luke, that it's more about just like when they're saying men shouldn't have long hair. It's not saying because Absalom had long hair. He died because of it. It got caught in a tree. There were many men in the Bible that were men of God that had long hair. The point is you're not supposed to present yourself as the opposite gender. 
So the issue of yeah. long hair, it's more about them not. Uh, I I looked up first century hair like haircuts to learn about it. A lot of time, a lot of men would just grab their hair in a fist and take a razor and cut it, so it would be right about the chin length. That was a common uh, haircut for back then. But the point was, afar off, like Flora said, they all wore gowns, like long dress type thing, robes. That, that when you look at someone, you should be able to tell that they're male or female, you know, by looking at them. So when that's the whole point about men not having this long, you don't want a guy flipping his hair over his shoulders all prissy. Yeah. And, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah. that's, that's what I was going to get at Renee, where I pretty much, when I studied it further myself, it was, you know, pretty much to, to differentiate the men from the women. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, well, um, so I just wanted to say one more thing. Sorry. Um, wait, so, you know, I was thinking, did Jesus, was Jesus a Nazarite? Wasn't it Jesus of Nazareth? So don't you think Jesus probably had like long hair? Well, Nazarite and they Nazarite are different things. A Nazarite. Oh, uh, okay, okay, cool. Just yeah, to make sure. A Nazarene is someone born who lives in Nazareth, but a Nazarite is someone that has taken the vows like Samson. It's a judge. It's like a, a type of vow that you took as yeah. a judge for. Him. Okay, that's what I was thinking because Samson had long hair, didn't he? Yeah, because yeah, yeah, I hair. think there were yeah. dreads. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. Samson, yeah. Samson, and old Delilah. She, uh, you know, he <laughs> he he fell for the wrong one, and she uh, she caught him slipping and, yep. and took his hair. Have you noticed that uh, <laughs> certain names uh, that uh, um, it's very very rare to find someone today that has the name? Uh, we don't hear people named Adolf. Uh, we don't hear a name Judas. And uh, uh, what was the one other one we just said? Uh, 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 Delilah. <laughs> People are not naming them just Delilah, Judas, and Adolf. You know, a good. I'm glad you brought up Judas, brother Luke. A good reminder for the people in the chat when they're confronted with work salvationists or they're confronted with people who believe they're going to enter heaven based on their level of spiritual growth or obedience or any of that. Just remind them that Judas walked with Jesus, he casted out demons, he did all kinds of things, but one thing Judas never did was trust that Jesus was the Christ. He never yep. trusted, he never trusted in Jesus to save Guess him. Guess what else, bro? Guess what else he did? He What's not that? only repented of the sin and felt really bad for it, he also made restitution. Yep. Well, there, there is an important distinction that we're always making. Uh, there's a difference between being a believer and a disciple. And so you have some people that are believers and not disciples. They're not following, but they believe. And you have some that follow, like Judas. And there's many others that follow Jesus. And then they left him because he says, eat my body and eat and drink my blood. And they're all repulsed and left him. So there's a lot of people who are disciples and they're followers, but they're not really believers. Yep, that's true. And that other one, you made a point one night, Luke, about the gathering demoniac. He wanted to follow Jesus as a disciple, and he said no. So if you got to follow Christ to be saved, then he just turned him away for salvation. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, another thing is these Ooh, people that we're talking that's about. Deep. They, Better highlight yep, that yep. one. <laughs> I told somebody that before, and they were like, where's that at? I was like, oh, my gosh. Listen, you need to read your Bible. I can't babysit you through it. Because some people actually think that Judas was saved and that is a proof of loss of salvation. Like, I can't. I, oh my just gosh, can't. it says they, Jesus knew who did not believe and who would betray him. And one of them was a devil, he said. He called him a devil. No, apparently, you know, a <laughs> devil can also be a born-again Christian, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Right, right. <laughs> apparently, salvation was offered to, to the uh, fall, those that are already fallen. Right, right. God apparently already condemned them as fallen angels. Yeah, that's and, and right. And apparently, yeah. they, can, they can still be saved. <laughs> right, right. No, don't you know that... <laughs> Um, Even the, the demons also believe. believe. Oh my gosh! Hear that one more time. I'm gonna scream. Okay, <laughs> hey, all right. Look, here's a here's a little joke for the people in the chat that missed it. Now, just imagine if if Paul was a Calvinist and Silas ran up to Paul and said, "Sir, what must I do to be saved?" And Paul said, "Nothing, dude. You're already predestined to hell." <laughs> uh, right. I can't stand that no, when people say you're predestined to hell. Sorry. 
I always I'm sorry, it, God so. chose to throw you dead. God did not love all the whole world. That's right. He only loved the elect. Whosoever will, come. It says, whosoever will that I said it's okay and pre-chose you to believe, then you can come. Okay, I've got another one uh, uh, on this list here of truisms I want to promote and try to get people to repeat this. This is another one that I got from Sister Lisa. Uh, her channel is For the Most High Jesus. And uh, she used the term, the gospel says believe, not behave. It's believe, That's not true. behave. You're saved by believing, not by behaving, in other words. Yes, yeah, sir. Brother Luke, a lot of people take the word believe and they, they try to make it mean a belief that equals, you know, a behavior change or yeah, behavior. They redefine it. They redefine the word belief. Faithfulness and obedience. They said that it's obedience. Yeah, it's well, and okay, in a way, the word itself belief does not mean obedience. No, it means but God. the but the result of believing is obedience, not obedience to the law, but you have believed, you have obeyed right. the gospel. That's right. the point. And right. they don't get that. When they read that part, yeah. they're like, You see? You you see? Gotta obey the gospel. Oh God, Gospel oh, was bear or die. When we <laughs> believe, the gospel is not Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. When we when we believe the gospel, we have obeyed the gospel is your point, and that's true. But here's the thing: is that I thought you were going to say that. Uh, I'm glad you didn't. But I thought you were going to say that uh, when you believe, then uh, then you will obey. Oh but, no, you won't be back. No, because. I mean, that's just it's, it's just we, a delusion. How, how much our life, that everyone's going to be perfect. How much our life changes after we are a believer is unique to each person. Some people's lives change dramatically. They, their, their growth and maturity goes up like that. Other people, it's so radical. Other people, you don't ever see a change in them. And you don't know what's going on inside them either. Like he could be healing them from crazy PTSD and yeah. bitterness. We don't know. And it's just people go through so much in their lives, and, and they, people have so much pain. And you know, I mean, even I, okay, um, I had to tell God, I was like, you know, Lord. How do I accept such a love? It's so hard because, you know, I, I didn't grow My dad left when I was young. So it, it, it's really hard. But I do believe you love me. And I do believe that you died for me. I do believe you gave your son to die for me. I do. And I receive, And I know that I'm saved because of it. And he washed me, you know, with the regeneration of his Holy Spirit. And he cleansed me with his word, and I renew my mind. And I understand that it can be hard. The problem with saying things like, if you're really saved, because what we all know, it's just an issue of spiritual maturity, not salvation. If you're really saved, you'll have all this and this, this works, and your life will change, and you won't want to do this, and you won't want to do that. But we know clearly the flesh lusts against the spirit. It wars against the spirit. And they deny the possibility, the unfortunate but very possible carnality of a Christian. And here's the problem with saying that born again really means you've turned over a new leaf and you're because I've seen many people get religion and turn their whole lives around and become holy. Buddhist monks do it. Catholics, Jehovah's Witness, they all find religion and they give up their bad habits. They get serious about their faith and they start through their own willpower changing things. Meanwhile, the heart is in the same condition it always was in, except now they become self-righteous. So they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge, but they have all this outer change. And then, then they say, oh, they're born again. Tim Conway said that. What happened to him? Oh, he got saved. That's why he's acting so. No, he got religion. He thought he had to repent of his sins to be saved. So what did he do? He gave up certain sin because he thought that's what saved him. But that is not evidence of salvation. And it's very dangerous to say that if a person has all these changes in their life, that's proof they're saved. Because I've seen many people from false religions, including Islam, 
where they've changed their life for the better and they're still just as lost as they ever were. Yeah. Okay, here I'm going to give you another truism here. Uh, oh, okay, this is one that I just came up on a video just recently. If works must accompany faith, show me your resume. Ha. Uh. <laughs> well, when people start saying you got to have this changed life, I say, okay, show me your resume. Let me see. Tell me all the work you did today. I want you must, it must be very impressive. And they don't have one. It should it should humiliate someone into realizing. Wait a second. Uh, and they, if they do tell you something, you're going to be shocked because the works that they're offering you are puny. It's a joke. It's a joke. Right. And then they're boasting. And then they're boasting, Brother Luke. Yeah. Here's another thing that makes it really simple. If you really take things to their logical, basic, common sense conclusion, if our entrance to heaven was based on how well we obey or grow or produce fruit or do good works, where in the scripture gives us the acceptable bar? Surely God would Thank not leave you. us in the dark. Thank you. Our righteousness must exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees. And they were as strict, so strict that they added man's tradition to make them even stricter, to put more bondage on people. You could only walk X amount of feet a day on the Sabbath. So you just got to exceed that. But what is that? So they, I mean, if, if they could really prove their position, right? I mean, the, the way that God works with me is just taking things down from like, Everybody wants to go deeper and deeper and deeper into thought and explanation. The way God works with me is just really making it so simple. Like, okay, if if your ideology is correct, then you need to be able to point me to where God says, okay, once you've done this enough, this enough, this enough, then I will accept you. Amen. It says that good works are things that we should do. Because why? They are profitable and honorable unto men. That's right. God says, let, God says, let your light shine. So we yep. should let our light shine. God doesn't say, if you don't let your light shine, you're going to lose your salvation. That's right. God and doesn't we say. We have to have a light. We have to have know, a light first. We got to believe on him first. We got to be saved first. Exactly. And it's just, and, I mean, with um, everything. And here's the biggest one that I run into, and it's prevalent everywhere. They all go to John chapter 15. And they say a truly saved, born-again Christian will produce the fruits of this and the fruits of that. And now, mind you, yes, once we're born again, an apple tree produces apples. But some trees produce one apple. Some produce a thousand. What is, where is the acceptable number Amen. of apples before, you know, is the person with ten or less just going to get shut out of the kingdom? They or, or you know? That's all. They're just mixing up verses. He who sins is of the devil. That's the flesh. The flesh sins. And, and the one yeah. point you had the They actually the think they don't sin. Those verses they actually up think that. And think the, that the they don't sin, but if you're really saved, you won't sin. And, and here, here's yeah, a deeper somebody one. Somebody told me that. Sinning? Somebody told me Could that on my sinning? channel. And they're like, well, no, I still make mistakes, but then I repent of it. It's like, okay, then this verse it's can't like, what? what you're saying oh, it means. Why would it, if it means what you're saying, it means that a saved person cannot sin and they won't ever sin again if they're really born again. And you just told me you still sin, but then you repent of it. Then that verse cannot mean what you're saying it means. Because then that's right. also you're a hypocrite, a complete hypocrite. Because you just basically they're hypocrites. They read that to you as though they don't sin, even though they do. I like you, little children, that you sin not. Stay away from idols if it wasn't possible for them to sin. Perfect, perfect verse. Because here's the thing. They, they use that same they use that exact verse to try to make it seem like, okay, well, well, we don't sin as much as y'all, so therefore we're in right or standing with God. They'll say, even John says, I write to you that you sin not. But if you sin, not when you sin, see how they try to turn that if you sin, but not oh, when you sin. Let me interrupt everybody so we can give uh, Natalie a chance. She's she's waving her finger, wants her attention. Turn your microphone on, Natalie. Hey, sis. Turn your microphone on. Turn your microphone on. There you go. Yeah, I put it on that. 
Um, I was going to say, it's idolising, like, if you've got... Is it is it looking up to a celebrity or a um, a animation, you know, like a cartoon character, like Barney or Thomas the Tank Engine? Like, you're obsessed with Thomas the Tank Engine. Is that idolising or not? I don't know. You know, sister, the only time Thomas the Train or Barney would become an idol in your life is if you actually... <laughs> Uh, we're so consumed with it that it literally, like, you worshipped it, you 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 prayed to it, and you literally well, just consumed. Right. Listen, it's no. Listen, if if you like if you like cartoons, if you like sports, if you like uh, recreational things, listen. D like Paul said, you know, uh, uh, brother Luke said earlier, you know, not everything is is bad. You know, some things are okay. Some things we just need to be mindful of how much time we're giving it, you know, like our cell phones can easily become an idol, but not really. I mean, if oh, you're just, yeah. I mean, if you're constantly on your cell phone 24 yeah, seven, every single day, you should practice <laughs> putting it down once in a while and then spend time with God. Just basically the whole idol thing is just, you know, keep God in his rightful place in your life. I'd like to, um, I'd like to ask uh, brother Cripps a question here. Uh, okay. Brother Cripps, uh, Here's uh, something I keep, I'd like you to respond to. Uh, let's see, this is another one of the sayings. Uh, religion says do, 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 but Jesus says done. Yeah, yeah he already finished it. He, he said it's finished on the cross. He said it's finished. It's done. There's no more work for us to do. We don't have to do anything. He's he's completely finished the work. It's not based on part of our works and part of what he finished. It's not based on even 1% of our works. It's based 100% on what he finished. So all we have to do is believe and trust in what he did, not what we do. That's pretty simple. Yeah. The work the work that is really matters has been done. Yep. So we add nothing to it. We come to the table. We literally stand before God, and when asked the question, um, why, sh why should you be let in? This is not the way it's going to happen, but just for the sake of argument. Why should we be let in? Why should we have eternal life? We say, because of what he did. That's all we have. That's all we bring with us. Otherwise, we're going to hear, I never knew you depart from me. That's it. And if a person comes to the conclusion, that the works that Jesus did on our behalf, his perfect righteousness that's credited to us, his shed blood that paid for all of our sins, if a person determines that that was not enough and they've got to make, contribute their own works, add their own filthy rags yep. to it, then they are spoiling it, it's ruined, it's polluted, they're adulterating this blood, your blood of Jesus Christ with their own works. Yep. Yep. If you have a, a clean, clear, 100% glass of H2O, glass of water, and add it's 99%, well, it's 100%, and then you add 1% uh, poison, it's poison. That's it. It's no longer uh, water without poison. The, the, the two things uh, can't mix. Hey, Brother Crip. Yep. You know, one of the things where they get really confused is they take things that Jesus said to Israel while they're still under the law, and he's referring to the unbelieving religious Pharisees. Yep. And they take those verses where he's talking about the Pharisees by their fruit, you'll know them, and stuff like that. And they try to apply it to a believer. And right. it has nothing to do with the church, it didn't even exist yet. And secondly, it has nothing to do with a believer that just has too much sin. It, it has to do with a person that doesn't believe. It's referring to self-righteous, hypocrite Pharisees. Amen. They have to read when was he speaking and to whom. And they just take all this. They're so self-centered. They think everything's about them. Yeah. You know, it's got to be read in context. Everything. Mm. That's where people mess up, you know, and there's so much confusion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Absolutely, okay, so, letting the scripture flow. Yep. Yeah, it is because um, there was a. There, I had to make a video the other day because somebody else made a video saying that without water baptism and the ability to speak in tongues, you're not saved. 
<laughs> and they oh, dude, what's totally, water gonna totally, totally man, I'm not even going to go there. Destroyed uh, where Jesus was talking to Nicodemus. Like, completely clueless. Like, he just didn't get it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, the wa- the water is, you know, here's what I tell people in, in, in the ministry that, that, you know, God has entrusted me with. If you have the physical ability to get in the water, it, you're only going to get wet if you don't come to the understanding of the gospel first. Put your trust in Jesus Christ first. I, I think that if a person turns to Jesus Christ, puts all their trust and faith on him and him alone, and they get saved, that they should, out of a, out of you know an outward profession of, of what they profess to the world, that they should go into the water. They don't have to go into the water. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Um, I've been baptized twice. <laughs> I'm not against water baptism. I just know it didn't save me. No, no, and, not um, you. I'm just talking about those no, people no, that I'm, you're talking about. Yeah, they will I agree they with will you. stay in the book of Acts. They will stay with like Acts oh, two, God, yeah. or they'll you know they'll stay in Galatians three, and they'll always drum up these doctrines for how the water is like the water is the they whole like the water is the savior can right. save you. I don't get it <laughs> I don't understand <laughs> I'm trying to I don't understand how you can fix listen do you not take a bath though do you take a shower though does the shower make you safe though no <laughs> they, they, they still do this they still say this about speaking in tongues they say and in, in the church service they actually say turn to the person next to you this happened to me turn to the person next to you and ask them if they have the uh, gift of God the, the the Holy Spirit by the evidence of speaking in tongues and and they came right out and said that if you didn't speak in tongues you didn't have the Holy Spirit which means you're not saved by their estimation Oh boy, and it's such a sad twisting of that part of scripture, especially yep. especially when Paul uh, saw the uh, you know the followers of John who who were you know baptized baptized under repentance, but they have yet heard the gospel. And when it says that Paul laid his hands on them, a lot of people really take you know power and authority that I believe Jesus specifically gave to the apostles. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because no, because Jesus today, he says, you know, in the book of Hebrews, he becomes greater than Moses, greater than the angels, greater than the shadow. He becomes the once and for all sacrifice. He's our intercessor, our high priest, all that. So, and it says very clearly that there is one mediator between God and man, and that's our Lord Christ Jesus. But I believe at the time that the apostles, they had a mediator type position. Amen. That that just we don't have that today. Like we we as men and women cannot play mediator between a, a person and God. That can oh, only be Christ. That's such a great point. Uh, I I agree completely. And so they take this this understanding where we all as believers can just go around laying our hands like the Holy Spirit is like some tangible force we just pass into people. You no, you don't receive. Pass <laughs> off the Spirit of God onto another person. <laughs> they think they can throw it. They think they can blow it. They think they, they can. They huff it and puff yeah, it. Yeah, it's true. They throw I it mean, and it's blow weird. It. They it blow that's it. what they that. talk about when they say, um, you know, that's this really gets on my nerves, though, when they say stuff like, um, oh, yeah. I feel the anointing. Like, dude, anointing. you feel the anointing? I, I really? Sure, like, really? <laughs> and they're like, no, listen, it gets on my nerves so much because they're like, oh, Never. the anointing is just filling the room. How about, how about when they he's all in you? How, <laughs> he's in you. Yes. When they say, "Oh, he's coming down." No, this come, is not yes. another Pentecost. Come, he's come already Holy here. Spirit. Like, where's more. he coming from? He's more. already in you. More, more. <laughs> Don't get it. More, here it comes. More, <laughs> more. Right now, Lord. Right more. now. Yeah, more. Right. And that's more. really <laughs> demonic. That's really demonic. Because when you're you like, know, more, what are you yeah, calling a Kundalini spirit? Fire, fire. fire. The, 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 more, yeah, Lord. There's an atheist traveling europe right now doing what benny hen and all those do about blowing on people and all that yep. Yep. and then tells them now you believe this yeah. or not? and these people will say yeah we believe now and he goes i'm an atheist that was not the power of god i just used it was a and he tells them all the power of suggestion yeah yep. it's, it's a literal yep. Trick. yeah yeah I saw, uh, I'll never forget this. I saw a guy come to my town. Now, if anybody knows me, they know I'm just a good old independent Baptist. Um, you know, I'm not a, 
I'm not a cessationist. I do believe in the gifts of the spirit, but I do believe them rightly defined by the Bible, not by a denomination, of course. not by an experience. I believe the Holy Spirit's still moving. Amen. But this guy came to town and he set up the old, I'm going to watch the leg grow. And little did he know, little did he know that I had studied that already. And I, and I studied all the way, uh, all the different ways that they fake it. Uh, the actual like um, power of suggestion behind it and the little tricks they use with the ankle yep. bending and yep. the and the fingers and everything. Yep. I walked up to the guy and I straight up exposed him and he turned so red and he felt so stupid. He, he picked up and left and like left the event. Well, awesome. It served a purpose then. Yeah. <laughs> but his his buddies were like, oh, he's the devil. I mean, they were calling me the devil and he's oh, the one over there being a charlatan, you know? Of course, they were calling you a devil. <laughs> People were you saying know, you that you have was... to have no fear for the living God to do such a thing. Like, yeah. why? For Literally. money? Is it really worth it to, to go to hell? Because obviously, you haven't believed. So you're going to go to hell because you haven't believed. Also, you're a liar because you want to sit there and fake grow legs. <laughs> right. Well, a lot of them, a lot of them, Sister Lily, they get caught up in. Uh, wanting this move or this power and you know and it's it's you know just go back to acts with uh you know simon uh the sorcerer and you know he he wanted to buy the power of the holy spirit there's a lot of these people today because in a lot of denominational circles and a lot of bad uh biblical teaching circles they crave power authority they crave a position they crave admiration they crave uh making a name for themselves and you know if you really go on uh you know the internet and you look up every one of these new uh name people coming up rising to fame they're every one of them have a video of the quote unquote leg growing uh miracle they call it a miracle and you know i just i literally when I, that day that i interrupted that guy i looked at the crowd and i said would you guys please just use your god given brain if it was a, if a true miracle does anybody here have a have a uh, you know an amputated leg or a prosthetic leg let this man grow your leg back out for real for real and then that will be a miracle this little yep. ankle growing uh, knee bending leg shifting thing is is junk I was like, yep. what are you people even, this is like almost blasphemy towards God. They're, they're no more than street, street grifters. That's all they are. You know, but I mean, just trying to get the people to understand that they were hooing and hawing and amening yeah. over like a little ankle trick. Like, yeah. is that what our, is that what our God is reduced to? A little parlor trick? He's and not that's what, He's No, not no, he's, no, is that what these people that are like in awe over it? Well, yeah, I was going to point out it's, it's the false signs. And it's false signs and wonders. They they they're seeking a uh, a sign or a wonder to convince them, and that's what they build up. They, they and Satan so loves crap. that man. Satan loves people who are trying to walk by sight. He yep. loves people that are trying to feel something, touch something, wow, taste something, wow, wow. experience something, and he's right there to give them exactly yeah. what they're looking for. Well, that's the Kundalini spirit, the feeling, the, the feeling that they say the, when they, they think it's the Holy Spirit, but it's not. It's the same. You can look at the descriptions of someone doing it in New Age. It's the same feelings, same contortions, same shaking, yeah. same drunkenness feeling. The, sensation. The, they like sensation. Um, yeah. You know, they like the feeling, the emotion. Oh, I just feel like. Listen, you, you can't lean on your own understanding, Thank and you. you can't you can't um go up, up with your emotions and your feelings because you will fall for a lie. No, uh, me, we uh, go by faith and not by sight. Let me uh, respond to something Renee said a few minutes ago when she was talking about the Book of Hebrews. Uh, uh, I've been watching um, a new channel that I've been recommending. Uh, uh, David Benjamin in Christ. Yes. He's, That's he's a good really, brother right there. Uh, he's doing some great teaching. Right now he's teaching the book. Yes, I love David Benjamin. So, you know, I, want to, I want to send everybody to his channel and check out uh, all his teaching. But uh, uh, the book of Hebrews, he's got some insights in it that are really, really, really good. Uh, all right. Yeah, I definitely recommend Brother David uh, in Christ, uh, Brother David Benjamin in Christ. He uh, 
he, he has some really good insight on some things. Um, you know, he's, he, he makes things really easy to be understood. Um, you know, I've been watching his channel for a while, and, uh, you know, he's a good guy. I know he's been under attack lately, uh, like Sister Renee has. Um, and it's just it's just everybody, I'm telling you, it, it's so strange. It's like, I want to just look at it this way. If everybody that says, like, even, I mean, I'm, I just started a YouTube channel, and, and I'm even getting it already, but I, I delete them people right away because it's just unfruitful. But here's the thing. If people are saying that we in the grace community actually have a doctrine of demons and our community is so small compared to the rest of Christianity, who's it really harming? It's like, is the devil that dumb? Is he that weak that he can only fool like a handful of Christians while hundreds of millions are, are just, they all found the truth? It looks to me to be the opposite. It looks to me that we found the narrow way while the rest of Christianity is on the broad way. And that's how I interpret it. Well, yeah, look at Paul, look at Paul Washer. Look at some of these Lord, the, the Lordship pastors and see how many views they have compared uh, to any one of the grace community. Yeah. It's well, ridiculous. you know, you know, Paul Washer, as my, well, they, <laughs> I, I forget the name that they had for him, but you know, Paul Washer has been like slowly changing his tune. And, and I'm not, I don't follow him anymore. I mean, when I first got saved, I followed all of them. I was doing the whole Calvinism, Arminian thing. I was doing the whole uh, dispensation thing. I was in and out of all types of doctrines. Oh, no. But but I've noticed that Paul Washer is is literally pulling back and and changing some things. Like I saw a quote from him the other day, where as you know, in his younger days, he would say, "Oh, if you know, if you don't change and you don't have the works and you don't have this, you know, backloading works into the gospel." He he said a statement. The the other day that um you know you can't we can't judge someone's self salvation based on how much they mature as some will mature more than others and that shocked me because i didn't think i would ever hear that coming he from Paul repented. Washer. maybe he repented i mean we all hope for them to repent it's not like we we don't want to be condemning either it's not like we're trying to condemn them we're like right. oh, I'm just saying, I, I never i never i never thought i would hear that come out of paul washer's mouth no, I no. Never listen, thought that. If they switch to the to the true gospel and start preaching the right gospel, I, I I'm more than happy to listen to them. More than happy to have that in my arsenal of uh, of uh, building. No, I'm not. No, I'm not going out on a limb and saying, "Hey, go listen to Paul Washer." No, no, no. I, I don't. No, no. I'm I'm just, yeah, we don't know for sure. We don't know for sure. <laughs> right, right. But but I mean, just to see him say that, it really was a shocker for me because you know everybody knows how hardcore. Lordship Paul Washer is, and he probably still is, but I've noticed that at times he's throwing in different uh, uh, sayings and understandings that, that he's never did before. So maybe God is working on him. I don't know. Well, we All I'm saying, it was just really strange to hear that come out of his mouth. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is uh, amazing good news. I, I hope that uh, he really understands the truth and it's going to change his message, but you know, we do our Wednesday night Bible studies, and the, the first few studies we did was we, we analyzed some of the famous sermons of the past. Uh, the uh, uh, Jonathan Edwards sermon, his, his sermon, his sinners in the hands of an angry God. Uh, we did the Warrant of Faith by Spurgeon, and we did the, uh, uh, the famous sermon by Paul Washer that uh, made everybody afraid that they, they weren't really saved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, really, really horrible. We hated every every line in it, uh, and uh, so if, if he has actually s said uh, believes what you're you're saying there, if he's changed his view on that, that is a miracle. I'm I'm not rushing to to be like woohoo. He's changed. You know, he's got the real he's got the real deal now. I'm just saying, just just for him to even say it that way is like it's promising, but it's way too early to say anything. Yeah, you brought it yeah, up. That, that person has yeah, to be, definitely uh, pray for him. <laughs> I had uh, one day when I, if you go to my street preaching videos, uh, one of the videos you see a dialogue that I'm having with uh, these two guys come up and start asking me questions, and they uh, they say, "Well, we want That's a great message," and they agreed with me, and they told me that they were with uh, visiting Las Vegas from their from Duluth Bible um, in. And I got to know them a little bit and corresponded with them after that. But they said they agreed with the message. And, and then they said, 
But let me ask you, you're, you're saying you're saved by, by grace alone, through faith alone, and Christ alone. But what if tonight, here in Sin City, I, I go out and commit a big whopper of a sin? And I said, well, you, you may have some consequences for your sin. You, know, you might end up in jail or catching some kind of sexually transmitted disease or getting in a DUI. Who knows what you're going to do? And, and, and But there may be consequences. But one consequence you will not have to worry about is you're not going to lose your salvation. Amen. And they said, oh, that's good. And then they said, well, what about this? What happens if if my, fa my house burns down, all my family is killed, and I lose my faith, and I hate God, I don't even believe in God, or I hate God, and no longer a believer. And I said, I did this, I said, look, this is a picture of you and Jesus, you have a hold of Jesus, you put your faith in him, he has a hold of you, now you get installed in some sin, but he still has a hold of you. You lose your faith, but he will never leave you or forsake you. No. And so he, uh, they, and what they did was they believed that, but they were testing me. They were taking me a step further instead of just accepting, oh, it sounds like he's preaching the real gospel, but let's test him and find out, well, what, okay, are you saying that the person can be a big sinner and they're still saved? What about homosexuals? You know, the street preachers used to always ask me, Brother Luke, you don't really believe that a practice in homosexual could be saved, do you? Yeah. I said, yeah, of course I do. I mean, you're a practicing the sinner. The same as anyone else. Yeah, I said, you're a practicing sinner. You're, you're, you're What? Well, you're full of spiritual pride and self-righteousness. <laughs> nice. So, get him, uh, get him uh, brother Luke. But the point I'm making is that sometimes we were a little bit too uh, early to take for granted that the person's profession is exactly right. And we and they took the, a couple of steps further to scrutinize me, to test me, to see, to see if I was really believing in faith alone and eternal security or not. You passed. Yeah, I passed their test. Pass, brother. <laughs> okay, is everybody speechless now? I I would doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, that's what I really like about what Sister Renee does. Because even though I, I feel her pain, because I often find myself doing the same thing she does. We pick or we talk about something, but we can't help it. It's just in us. It's what God is, you know, speaking through us. And it's just a repetitive reminder of the simple gospel. And and I know Renee has hundreds and hundreds of videos and she, she reminds people in every single one of them. And, and, you know, I know it gets annoying, but never stop doing that sister Renee, because you like so many new people are just discovering you and they need to hear it. But what I was trying to get at, Every video is, has to start with the gospel, no matter what it's Exactly. About. But what I like that you do that really helps people is you, um, not only do you continue to give the gospel, but you, you explain the differences between the mindset of those who don't understand the free gift versus the what the scripture is actually saying to those who already have the free gift. Uh, sister, looking is trying to talk, guys. We got to divide this. Yeah, let's have Natalie, uh, Natalie uh, uh, go ahead and take a turn to talk here. Hello. Um, you know, some of the preachers, I think some of them, they come across a bit too fierce. Like, the straight away, uh, you, uh, you're supposed to go with love, aren't you? I think. Um, you're supposed to start with love. And, you know what I mean? Preach how they can be saved or whatever. But so, some go like... Oh, you're going to hell, or you know what I mean? Too much fire and brimstone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yep. so people turn off; they don't want to listen to such yeah. horrible things. Well, you know, me, um, Christ they adding, um, they mix the gift of eternal life with the gift that we give God back of discipleship. They they yeah. mix up what God has done for us, which is what saves us, from what we should be doing. For him, and then they mix up verses where Jesus is talking about what the disciples will have to go through. If they're going to follow him, they're going to have to give up everything, even possibly their lives. And he just wants to make sure, hey, you better know what you're doing here because I don't need half hearted people. And people take those verses and say, see, you got to give up everything, hate your mother and father, sell everything you own, give it to the poor, give up your own will, everything to be saved. And that's not what he's saying at all. At yep, all. and they just don't get it. They they you know, don't get it. What's the sister's really name? Doing it? 
John MacArthur said you have to give up your own will, give up everything, pick up your cross and follow Jesus. He has not done that. He probably has sinned a big sin and now realized that he's not sinless perfection. And he's now thinking, let me go back and read the Bible. What's the, uh, what's the sister's name that asked the question? Uh, Natalie. 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 Okay. Are you, are you talking about like when you, when you listen, when you listen to a sermon, are you talking about those that are, that are preaching really heavy about hell? Yeah. They make God seem like a monster, but God is love. Okay. Let me. Let me um let me give you let me give you a different perspective on that because there are times where I preach that way and it and it takes me back to the book of Jude verses 21 through 23 it says that on some we should have compassion and on others uh by fear and what do I mean by that is is um you know if I'm in a if I'm out evangelizing at the boardwalk or I'm at an event preaching um, you know, I kind of pray for God to give me eyes to see what's in the room. And if there's a lot of hardened hearts, if there's a lot of um, really rough, edgy people, me being very calm and compassionate, they're, they're not going to, I have to get fired up. I have to get loud. I have to hit them right in their chest and I do it in love, but I have to give them the bad news and I have to make it really bad so they understand it. And especially then I have to come. They're good, dude. Especially those that think, well, I'm, I'm a pretty good person. Right. Those are the right. ones. Right. And so, and so some of those sermons aren't for everyone. But let me tell you something. Those are the sermons that, that really got me. Like I am a, am a sucker for a good hardcore preaching. And, and a lot of people aren't. And I get it. But we should use discernment um, when we're giving a message and, and you know, just flow accordingly how the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, moves through us. And But some people need a good kick in the butt, if that makes sense. I'm told um, I have offended people before. They've said, "You, I feel like you're yelling at me all the time. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think that about well, me. I, 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 I try to be sensitive, but I can't, I can't change. I, I do my best. But the thing <laughs> is, is that you're always going to offend somebody. Brother Dave, you're a... Uh, you uh, have a lot of experience uh, as an evangelist and preacher, and, and I know you agree that uh, when Jesus says that we're fishers of men, that uh, it's not just some loose term he's throwing around. Uh, we, being a fisherman, uh, there is skill involved in it. There are absolutely you got you can't you. Can't. You can't use a worm, you know, in a certain body of water. You got to use a lure. You can't yeah. use a lure in a certain body of water. You got to use a worm. Right. And that, and that's why I went back to Jude where it says on some have compassion and meekness and tense because there are some people who are really hurt. They Maybe they've been verbally abused and they don't want to hear some guy yelling at them, you know, but then there's some people who come in on their Harleys and they're not going to sit there and listen to no soft monotone guy either. You know, yeah. save some. What does it say? Save yeah. some. Still fear pulling them out of the fire or something like that. Yeah. Code Code Man just joined us. Let's give Code Man a hey, chance. Okay. Hey, what have you got to say? What would you I like? Don't to know. Any questions or anything? Nah. Is that Cody? Hi, Cody. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Hi. brother? Hey, Cody. All right. Well, just let me know if you feel like if you feel like saying something or have a question. Let us know, okay? Hey, uh, Marvo mm -hmm. contacted me. I I called I called to check on him. You guys, little Marvo, you yeah. remember Marvo? Yeah. What about Marvo? Yeah, I I just I got in contact with him, and he actually asked me to do this, and I may. I don't know how I'm going to go about it yet, but he needs a lovely Christian girl. He wants to get married. <laughs> we got to pray for him that he finds a yeah, nice. Well, I call him up too. Yes. <laughs> we want to uh, pray for you. Yeah, why not? You know, we're supposed to pray for each other. So Amen. We'll Marvo. Because I wasn't feeling well today. I was going to do a video for him, but I wasn't sure how to approach it yet. But I wanted, I told him I'd mention it to you guys and uh, to let you know I had talked to him. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll to the prayer for that on Sunday. Okay, I have a I have a pretty deep question that I really wanted to ask either Brother Luke or Brother Jason or you, Renee, if you guys have any um, uh, possible answer for this. Okay, the way that I explain it to people is that you know once you you know you turn to Christ and you trust on Him, once you actually trust Him and believe on Him and you get saved, the per 
purpose of your life and serve to God is for the judgment seat of Christ. Now, here's the thing. This is what I tell them. I say you can't lose your salvation, but you can lose possible reward. You can you can lose uh, possible crowns that God has made available, and you can lose uh, possible inheritances or responsibilities in the kingdom. Now, here's the thing. This is this was a question asked to me, and, and I answered it, but I want to see what your guys' take is to see if I kind of answered it in the right avenue. Somebody said, well, okay, let's say those who go on to maturity, they store up treasure, they receive crowns, they get rewards, they, get, they, they inherit the kingdom, or they get great responsibility in heaven. But what about the people who really don't do much, and they kind of remain immature and carnal, and they kind of just die that way? Where do they go into the kingdom, or is there a difference? At least it says that those that uh, break God's laws and even teach others to do so will be least in the kingdom. Uh, doesn't say they won't get in. They're just yeah. least in the kingdom. Right. No, uh, they, they understood that they would still be saved, but they were, I guess they were saying like, okay, let's say you take uh, five people, four of them go on to maturity, produce a lot of fruit, you know, advance the kingdom. They do a lot of good works, you know, for God's glory through the Holy spirit, blah, blah, blah. But then the one person kind of just stays behind buries his talent, doesn't do much, kind of gets back into drinking and then he gets in a car accident and he dies and he loses all his rewards. Does he become just like a, uh, like a, a, a little guy on the pole in heaven to just well, populate, to he, populate the new city? You know? I, <laughs> so, he, he's saved, but I think he's going in now Jesus it'll wipe away all our tears, but I think he, it's going to be known what we, I won't say him because me too. What we could have done, the, the good works God had ordained for us to do, and when we didn't walk in them, the things that we could have had or done for him to show him we love him. I think we're going to be faced with acknowledging these things. Yes. You know? But right. then he's going to wipe away those tears, and we're going to be in joy, and everybody knows that he's just. So nobody's going to be like, well, that's not fair. I don't have. Nobody's going to be like that because. Right. We all because and I that's what heaven. I that's what I tried to explain to them because if there's no sin going to be in heaven then there certainly isn't going to be any sorrow. There certainly isn't going to be any like shame. Amen. You know? And so and so even if you are one of those people who all your works burn up and even though you still shall be saved even as by fire, I still think mm -hmm. God is going to make it in a way to where you still you're not going to remember any shame or any, or have any regret, but I th I th think that your your position, kingdom, you you may you may have to be a fruit picker in the vineyard. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Still a nice job. I, I didn't I didn't hear the last. You I know, like I have a couple God. of viewers, and you know them, Luke, that hate the doctrine of being rewarded. But it's so clear that there's certain crowns for martyrs and soul winners. And stuff like that. I, I can't deny it, especially when it says, if the person's work abides, he shall receive a reward. And if it doesn't, if it's burned up, he shall suffer loss, but he himself yeah. shall be though as by fire. So I don't know how you can deny. Right, exactly, Renee. Work. And then and Paul Paul even reiterates it in Corinthians, not not even in three, but in another part of Corinthians where he says, the Lord will you know, give unto us according to our works of the body, whether yeah. good or bad. Yeah. And also I think John's the one that said, let no man steal your reward. I, I think there is talking, let no man steal your reward. Isn't it John that says that somebody says that. So I, I think um, that, that it's clear that what we do suffer here will be rewarded. And when he says, if you give up this or that or family, we're going to have it 10, a hundredfold here and there, you know, that we, that, that the faithful world, I don't know why people hate this doctrine so much. I mean, they get infuriated. And for about a year, I didn't even uh, discuss the doctrine of reward, but I found that if I didn't, people couldn't understand what motivation people had to do to live for God, because they think if you're not being held over hell, then there's no reason for you. Like the a lofty concept that we just love God and want to live for him. They can't. Oh, right. And, that, and, and, you know? and that's where I get a lot of backlash. I get a lot of backlash when I begin to exhort or encourage people to, 
you know, find their gifts and their talents right. that God has given them and, and to, and to shape them and grow in them and go out there and use them for his glory because you want, that. you want treasure stored in heaven. No, uh, but right. you know, yeah, some you of know, these, some of these people like are this. so hardcore. Some oh, of these people God. are so hardcore. They begin to tell me that I'm, I'm, I'm teaching people to do evil works or I'm yeah, teaching people to work for their salvation. Yeah, I don't, I don't oh. like that. And, and I found that if I didn't explain it, a lot of people just couldn't understand what their motivation was to, to live for God and to do these things. And why suffer then if you're not, it's not going to save you. Like they couldn't get well, it. But when I explained that we will be rewarded for our faithfulness, I mean, it, it, he's so gracious that none of us even deserve to be there to begin with. Amen. I, I just tell him like this. I tell him like this. Look, I'm exhorting you to go on to maturity. I'm exhorting you to, to battle your flesh. I'm exhorting you to follow the Lord. I'm exhorting you to use your talents yes. and your spiritual gifts because I don't yes. want you to be saved as by fire. I want you to... It's your eternity we're talking about here. A vessel of honor. You know, for the, man. the thing is... <clears throat> sorry. Um... They deny the power thereof, okay? They okay. don't understand what the Holy Ghost does in the life of, of a, of a born-again believer, a regenerated child of God. The Holy Ghost is the one who gives us the power to say no to sin, not the law, not do's and don'ts. So because they don't understand this, okay, they don't understand why we want to live for God. They don't understand any of it because they're blind. They're spiritually blind, okay? So when you continuously go back and forth, I don't even waste my time. After the third time and the person is, I just block them and delete them because they're deaf. They can't hear me. They're going to, God is going to use somebody else to get to them because it ain't going to be me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just, okay, well, uh, I'm so glad. Just, Go ahead, know, buddy. Remind me not to upset you, little girl. <laughs> <laughs> my my buddy, I no, had a buddy. You, you can never be canceled. You can never be canceled. It's like, hey, that's the that's the hip word. The you know, Lily, you, you Lily, you remind me of a friend of mine. <laughs> you remind me of a friend of mine, Sister Lily, because I had a buddy who would always tell me. Why do you put yourself through that torture? You go round and round and round. And I said, because I care, man. I got a big heart. But then after like a couple of years of doing that, I'm like, man, I'm burnt out. He throws me Titus 3, 9, and 10. He's like, learn to use it. You'll save yourself a lot of peace. And I never really caught that because I was like, no, I'm not going to give up on nobody. And I was, I'm like, Renee, like dealing with so many people and, and or just nonstop. But then after a while, do you know? Like Lily just said, if they don't have the understanding yet or if they don't have the eyes or the ears to hear or see, you really should just only a few go rounds and then dust off and let the Lord deal with them at another time. Yeah, and here's the thing. This is the beauty of the body of Christ. There are certain people that are, are better suited to to argue or debate these people if they if they have that place in their heart. While other people they can't they can't stand five minutes of it. And it's understandable. And I'm with her, you know, if they, they come back, I, I try, like when people come back and they go, what, are, it, it depends on how they're doing it. If they come back and say, well, what about James? And what about this? Okay. I'm answering these questions because yeah. maybe they're seeking, right. Uh -huh. And they're not automatically just hating the gospel. But then there's people that come in here and say, you just love your sin. You just, and after two or three times they're explaining, I'm just done. I'm with yeah. her. I'm like, they're, they, I'll plant a seed and maybe the law will shut them up eventually. Maybe they'll get to the point where they realize that they, they are not good. Right. And that's why Jesus said that, that people won't come to him because their works are evil. And so people won't accept the gospel and just plain and simple that it's free because they want to think some of their works are good enough mm -hmm. that they're keeping their self like uh, Flora and I were talking. Well about said. Yes. Yes. So they don't want to believe the gospel because they, 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 then it's like, well, what, what that's not fair. Okay, I mean, that lady that's stopping me after all these years, that recovered Baptist lady, Karen, she is just so resentful because she because uh, she's sick. Something's wrong with her. But she's, like, obsessed because she thinks her, she repented of her sin. How dare we think we're saved? We, but how does she know what we haven't repented of? We just don't boast about the sin we got rid of because it didn't save us. These things that the people are holding on to because they think it's good enough are exactly the things that will get burned up. They're mad because they think they're Absolutely. doing something and it's not fair. You get it for free. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's not fair. Any of us are, are free. It's not this fair. Is, yeah. This is why This is why I believe with all my heart, Jesus said in, in some of the Gospels, he said, you know, strive to enter in the narrow gate. 
and people think that striving in the, to enter the narrow gate means that you have to like, you know, be this perfect, right. perfectly obedient person to strive in. But G I believe Jesus used those wordings because it is naturally difficult for yes. a human being who is naturally inclined Amen. within themselves to work, earn, deserve, take Amen. pride in. You or, just or, yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. Do you know That's how it. hard it is? And and just to testify to that, I, I told you, Brother Cripps, on our interview that, you know, it wasn't until I realized how imperfect I was. I tried hard, man, to kill my yeah. flesh. I I I focused on every little sin I could think of every day. My salvation was a walking hell. No yeah. peace, no joy, until I got to the point where I threw my hands up and I said, you might as well put me in hell, Lord, yep. because I can't do this. Can do and then I heard I heard that still small voice that said, I never asked you to do anything. That wasn't me. But, yeah, he's like, that but was trust me. my son. That wasn't me. <laughs> and, I, I, but it, I wasn't convicting you of, of, of your sin. People have to get to a place where they realize just how bad they really are before they yeah. actually get to a place where they're able to fully trust on Christ alone. Yep. Once you get there, then you never have to focus on your sin again. And certainly you're not having to focus on other people's sin either. But these people have a tell. They're focused on your sin. That means they're they're uh, avoiding focusing on their own, but but they're doing that focusing on you so they don't have to focus on their own sin. And you ever notice those crowds of people? Yeah, they'll they'll come down on you hard and they'll they'll pick and cherry pick verses to make you feel like you're the worst of the worst. But you know what they'll never do? You know what you never ever see them doing? Meeting somebody where they are and gently restoring such a one. Oh no. They're on the bullhorn talking about going to hell. They're on the bullhorn. Yeah, the they think they're better than you. That's what it is. It's it's pride, you know, it's spiritual blindness, <laughs> it's deception, it's horrible. <laughs> Yep. You got it. Yeah, I just, you know, I just wish I could see, you know, I, I, I looked for that in a lot of those people because they've attacked me for years. And I, I never, ever seen any of them be able to just humble themselves. And, and even if they're right, even if I am caught in a sin or I'm doing something wrong, it's the way they come at you. They, they have no uh, ability to meet you where you are. And I think that that is like, so I think God is like shaking his head at people that do that. <laughs> there wasn't, there were, there's no grace. They don't None. offer any grace at all. They don't offer it to you and, and they don't offer it to anyone else. Again, they show you what they're concerned with. They keep focusing on sin. All the sin was, uh, was taken care of at the cross. So why are they still focused on it? Yeah, and that's, you know, that's a point that I that I give to a lot of people. I say, okay, listen, either Romans chapter 4 verses 5 through 8 are true or they're not. We need to investigate this. And every time I try to get them into Romans chapter 4, they'll come along, but as soon as they see what I'm up to, because every time you use Romans 4, 5 through 8, it literally just shuts down the entire avenue that they're trying to take. Look. Either our faith is counted for righteousness or it's not. Yep. Either Jesus in, is imputing our sins unto us or he's not. What does the Bible say? And they and they read it and then they, they just they don't know how to respond to that because it, it doesn't even make sense to them. But to people like us who understand that our sins are forgiven, we understand that we're saved and held by God. We're under, we understand that we're sealed until the day of redemption. That empowers us through his grace to not want to go like they accuse us of and just go live in sin. Do you know some of the most the most quote unquote holy rollers I've ever met are the most wicked people I've ever met? Yep. Yeah. Yep. They're the ones that come to Brother Luke after heart surgery and say, You should I wish you were dead or you're still alive, you should have died, or people that you know, mock me while I'm grieving for my son's dad who just died to say I'm doing it to deceive people and I fake mm -hmm. my disability. It, 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 these are people claiming Christ. They're the most wicked, black hearted people. And yeah. what's ironic is they claim you have to repent of your sin. To be <laughs> That's their tell. That's their tell, Renee. Evil. As soon as they start saying That's that, just you're just wickedness. You're they're showing you the, the heart. They're showing you their heart with their speech, and they don't even know that they condemn themselves. Yep. Yeah, they put it up on video because they're 
They do videos condemning and lying about me. Like yep. that, them look oh good. Gosh. Well, they I joined the crew apparently crew. because some guy, listen to this. So this black guy, listen, I don't know this guy. I do not know this guy, guys. I don't know what, I don't know this guy. He makes a video about me. He takes my my image and he makes a video about me. And the reason why he hates me is because I'm black and I believe Jesus. That is oh, the reason. Is that right? <laughs> yep, he hates me because I'm black. That and must be he's, uh he's that must be himself. one of yeah, that's one of the um that's one of the uh, higher enlightenment groups where yes. they, they, they call that they, they think that people that are, you know, African American that if they believe in the white Jesus or the or the white man's uh, faith, they're not they're not quoting this is what they say. They say that you're not woke. You need to be woke to the higher enlightenment of you know the ancestry of our peoples. I deal with them all the time and, and, and they Black Hebrew Israelite mm -hmm. people. No, these are oh. these are people. These are like a, a different hybrid of the Hebrew Israelites. But these people reject the Bible and Jesus altogether. They say yeah, you need to go to Jesus. a white devil. It's like a it's a new it's a new age type of enlightenment. But it's oh, it's now man. like it's they now say that, um they believe father, but they don't believe son. So I took <laughs> so I went to the scripture. I said you can't get the father without son. And I put, posted it down there for them. I was like, thanks for the, you know, promo. Thanks. Because now those people are going to come to my page. <laughs> or he that, den he that denieth the son hath not the father also. Boom. Boom. There it is. Yep. Amen. <laughs> I love it. Amen. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me, uh, let me uh, try to bring this to a close because it is, um, I, I think you guys could probably talk till uh, two or three in the morning Eastern time. Let but Okay. You want to run, run? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Do what you uh, need. For the sake of those people who uh, do want to, uh, uh, in the East Coast, it's midnight. Let's uh, let's kind of bring things to a close here. Um, I want to give everybody here at the panel a chance to just say good night and any final thoughts that you will have on the, the time we spent tonight. It was a good fellowship. Uh, mm -hmm. We we didn't have any agenda tonight. No particular mm -hmm. topic. Uh, to discuss we just let it go wherever it wanted to go and and there was never a moment where we didn't have a good time i think so i i, I my mark remark is uh i had a great fellowship with everybody i appreciate everybody being here let's start uh, from my left to right i'm looking at we got caleb caleb uh, you got any last uh, good night to you um all i just say is keep the faith strong and no matter how much these false prophets try to come against us, remember, they are powerless. Even if they have devils helping them, they're still powerless. So just, just keep looking mm -hmm. to Jesus. Amen. Amen, Amen brother. Uh, the next one here, uh, I see. Uh, oh, he's, he's already gone. Code man, he left without saying anything. Uh, okay. Uh, the next one I see here is uh, Brother Dave. Brother Dave, uh, you, you're, a, you're a very shy person, uh, but can you bring yourself to some <laughs> remarks? I wish you would. Listen, I, I just I just want to tell you all I love you all. Listen, we all listen. Always remember this for those in the chat. Okay, getting saved is the most precious gift you can have. Don't don't um, put so much weight on yourself, and and, and take time. Uh, even you know you don't always have to be a rabbit you can be a turtle spend time uh, alone with God in his word get it from your head into your heart just write it upon your heart just continually uh, go over his word until you get more and more familiar with it and and learn to just take your time take your eyes off of what everyone else is doing around you and learn to enjoy that 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 alone time with God, uh, you know, our our schedules are hectic. Uh, some of us have kids and and work overtime and everything. It's just a constant busyness. Learn to find, even if it's just fifteen minutes, learn to find some quiet solitude time with God, and just share your heart with Him. Be real and always remember to trust in Christ alone. You're in the race. Amen. And, and you're not always going to be in the same place as someone else. So just remind yourself that, hey, 
I'm not at that place, but I am still in the race. And that's all I have to say. I just want to encourage you guys. Thank you for having me on tonight. All right. Thank you, Brother Dave. Uh, the next one in my order, as I see it, is Frank. Frank, you want to say good night and any final thoughts? Yeah, I was enjoying staying here. What I think is uh, when you want a person to be safe and uh, someone is in the wrong position, when you have Facebook and you see Lordship, just pick someone out who isn't sure about what he believes, just give him the gospel and try to reason with him. And when you want a brother, you have won Christ a more favor, maybe even uh, a reward in heaven. Awesome. Next to that, I want to uh, want also to say, when you want to help someone, while you are struggling yourself, that is love. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Brother Cripps? Yes. Um, I'm glad to be a part of it, and I love hearing from so many different people. And I just felt it was good. And I will uh, definitely want to come back and uh, hello to everyone tonight in the chat. Uh, uh, Brother Luke, that chat was moving so fast at a couple points you couldn't even uh, you couldn't even stay with the comment. I'd make a uh, comment uh, occasionally that would it would be upstream before I knew it. <laughs> Crazy, uh, but yeah, it's 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 been great. Thank you. It was edifying for me, and um, it was entertaining and fun, and also a lot of good points made uh, to think about as well. So thanks. Yeah. Uh, amen. Yeah, I, you're right. It was going really fast. I, Renee usually tells me, oh, there's so many people in the chat room. Uh, maybe she knows how many people were there tonight, but it seemed like there's either a lot of people or a lot of activity in there, one of the two. Okay, Lily Girl, Sister Flora, what do you have to say? Yeah, thanks, guys, so much um, for sending me the link. Um, I enjoyed spending time and fellowship in with everybody. And... Um, we are saved by grace through faith. It's not our works that saves us. Uh, we don't have anything to boast about before God Almighty. Uh, we don't even deserve his grace and why, you know, he did what he did. I understand because he loves us and that's why we are able to love him because he poured his love into our heart. It shed abroad in our hearts and that's why we love one another. And that is evident and it is evident of our salvation to each other and we don't need to prove ourselves to anybody and even if they come to you and they, they say prove to me this prove to me that you don't have to prove anything to anybody because the only person who has the right to judge you is jesus christ himself all right mm -hmm. god bless you guys thanks for having yeah. me a little girl awesome thank you okay yeah. natalie. Yeah. natalie you had a few questions tonight did you have a good time yeah yeah, I did. Uh, uh, it's, uh, um, sorry. Um, yeah, I've enjoyed it. A um, um, bit tired because it's, it's quite late. So I, I've, I've been having sleepless nights sometimes because I've been stressing about family and people not accepting Christ that I love. And I just want... I want as many as people to get saved and accept Jesus because I don't want anyone to go to hell. You know what I mean? I, I want I want loads of people to get saved and I want Satan to lose. Oh, she's feeling the burden of the Lord. That's awesome. That is a uh, that is a great feeling, and I could just I, I discern right now. Let's let's pray for this sister, Father God. We just. Uh, want to lift up your holy name, Lord. We just ask you to give her, her peace of mind, peace in her heart. Lord, give her wisdom and understanding. Lord, give her boldness to, to share your love and your son with those around her. Help ease the burden and the pain in her heart as she just expressed, Lord, that she just wants to see people come to you in faith. And Lord, we just ask you to strengthen her in her mind and in her walk and, and, and just keep her protected in your, in your perfect love and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank Go you. for it, sister. Don't be scared. Don't be scared. I, I see. A, I see a lioness in you. 
Amen. And hey, you know, um, Natalie, you talked about your children and idols. I wanted to say this earlier, but, you know, um, don't worry, you know, so much. Um, just just try to give your children the same grace that My God has oldest given one, you. A bit of a mocker. Yeah. It, it, you know, the thing is, he's 15. Okay, what do you expect? I mean, he's a 15 year old, and this is the world that they live and grow up in. Um, just give him grace old. and give him love and pray for him you know god is faithful and you know don't worry about it don't let it make you burden because i've had this burden before especially for people around me that i love but all i can do at the end of the day is give it to jesus okay so yeah. mm-hmm. love you sis yeah. okay thank you all right sister renee what do you have to say yeah, guys, I, I didn't think I was going to make it tonight. I was very happy. I always feel so much better, no matter how I'm feeling physically. I, You know, it says the outer man perishes, but the inner man's renewed. I always Preach. feel so strengthened when I'm with you all, and our floor always cracks me up. It is uh, always so much fun. And uh, Jason, boom! And brother, <laughs> brother, Jason. I just, I love your preaching. I'm so uh, glad Luke was telling me about your channel, and uh, it's good to see you. Uh, are you in England now? Are you? The sister, uh, I can't remember her name. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. What's, Nat- what's her name? Natalie. Natalie. Yes, yes, yes. It's good to see her Yeah, again. I'm in England. Same as Lily Girl. And, uh, um, uh, Not Cody and Cody, and of course, Brother Luke. So uh, I just love uh, talking about Jesus and the gospel, and I always learn so much. Uh, I really appreciate it, you guys having me tonight. God bless you all. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you to everybody for participating. And uh, as Brother Cripp said, the, a lot of activity in the chat room. Thank you for being there. Uh, and it was a good time by all, and uh, that's why these Friday nights are so much fun. Uh, it's we're not necessarily doing some serious uh, Bible study, but we're spending some quality time together for, with people who love Jesus. And uh, there's nothing I'd rather do. So, thank you, and look forward to next time. Bless you all in the name of our great Savior, God Jesus. <laughs>